Welcome to This Day in Baseball. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat and every milestone and oddball event in between. Today's game is courtesy of ThisDayInBaseball.com. You can come for a peek, make friends for a lifetime. Before, after, and during the game, check out the links below the video and visit the player pages, parks, and teams as you listen to this blast from the past. You can catch us on every social media platform. And I want to do a special thanks to MLB Classic Radio Archives for this broadcast. Now, let's play ball. From WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Gillette presents the World Series. From the Yankee Stadium in New York this afternoon, we bring you the third game of the 1942 World Series as a feature of the Gillette Safety Razor Company's year-round cavalcade of sports, which embraces the Kentucky Derby, the football bowl games, New Year's Day, all major boxing bouts month after month, and other sports events of national interest. This is Mel Allen speaking for Gillette over the Mutual Network, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and hundreds of affiliated stations plus shortwave outlets WGEO and WGEA Schenectady, KGEI San Francisco, which beam these games to our armed forces abroad. Now this third game of the 1942 World Series is played by the National and American Leagues and the St. Louis and New York clubs as the agent for the USO, the United Service Organizations. It's a jam-packed stadium today, seething with tremendous excitement generated by those two hectic games that started the series rolling in swell shape out in St. Louis. And today, the Yankees will present a revamped lineup as a result of Cardinal manager Billy Southworth's choice of Ernie White, a left-hander, as his pitching nomination. So in the background, we hear the folks laughing, and it's Al Shack uh, entertaining them. But here quickly are the starting lineup for today's game for the St. Louis Cardinals. No change uh, from the lineup, which they presented the first two games outside of the pitcher. It's Jimmy Brown leading off playing second base, Terry Moore hitting second playing center field, Eno Slaughter batting third right field, Stan Musial in the cleanup spot left field, Walker Cooper hitting fifth catching, Johnny Hopp hitting sixth playing first base, Whitey Kurowski, whom we thought might be out of action because of a slight injury to his throwing arm in the second game, is back in there, he's playing third base, Marty Marion hitting eighth playing shortstop, Ernie White pitching and of course occupying the number nine spot in the batting order. For the Yankees, we have a revamped lineup as we told you. It's Phil Rizzuto leading off, playing shortstop. Buddy Hassett hitting second, playing first base. Roy Cullenbein hitting third, playing right field. Joe DiMaggio in the cleanup spot, playing center field. Joe Gordon hitting fifth. He's been elevated from sixth to fifth, playing second. And Charlie Keller, who has been hitting fifth, has dropped to sixth, playing left field. Bill Dickey hitting seventh and catching. Jerry Pretty is going to play third base in place of Brad Ralph. Pretty uh, playing third base, hitting eighth. Virgin Chandler is going to do the pitching for the Yankees. Of course, he's occupying the number nine spot in the batting order. So there is the Yankee lineup. As you know, Hassett, who hit eighth earlier in the first two games, is batting second. Pretty is hitting eighth. Joe McCarthy wanting to inject as many right-handed hitters into the lineup as he could to face the left-handed pitching Bernie White. The umpires back to the plate. George Barr of the National League. Cal Hubbard of the American League at first base. George Major Cut from the National League at second base, and Bill Summers of the American League on third base. And that very quickly is the picture as we see it here at the stadium as the Yanks and Cards get set to uh, go into action. And right now, here to give you his observations, a brilliant columnist of the New York Journal American, a member of Gillette's uh, staff of uh, their cavalcade of sports, Bill Corum. Thanks, Mel. To me, this is it. This ball game, as I see it, is the game that will decide the 1942 and 39th World Series. I believe the winning team today will go on to win the championship. And my reason for feeling that way is that this is the place where the Yankees, mighty men that they are, McCarthy's big boys, overpower their opposition. They've done it in the American League year after year, and they've done it with National League clubs in the series, and uh, this is their spot. I don't think, aside from Ken O'Day, Whitey Moore, and Harry Gumbert, that a single player on the Cardinals squad has ever seen, that's active player, of course, has ever seen the inside of this stadium. And certainly not packed as it is today with 70-odd thousand persons. One of the great, tremendous crowds that baseball has produced, 
and in a spot that I think is the finest stadium and the finest field uh, uh, baseball has. Certainly it's a relief to see an infield after that uh, infield at Sportsman Park where the grass looked like uh, the spinach on Grandpa's chin. They put something called molders dust on it out there and took all the grass off. And of course the Cardinals and Browns both playing, it gets no rest. And uh, as I say, it's really a relief to see a great field that we have here this afternoon. Now the records of the, the rival pitchers, Ernie White won seven and lost five for the Cardinals. He's a southpaw, comparatively small fella, not nearly as big as his opponent, Spurgeon Chandler, who won 16 and lost five for the Yankees. White is what is known as a sore arm pitcher. That is, he has a lot of trouble with his arm, but when he's good, like the little girl, he's very, very good indeed. And of course, he pitched a game that clinched the pennant for the Cardinals in their great rush when they practically came from behind the grandstand to down the Dodgers and win the National League flag. Shaq is getting a big hand from the crowd as he trots in and waving to the people. A great entertainer and a great fella, Al. Now to get back to White for a minute, he's one of Southwest's great left-handers. I don't say perhaps great in all time, but on this Cardinal squad, what you'd call a very, very good journeyman left-hand pitcher at least. And left-handers uh, have troubled the Yankees some this year. Smith and Chubby Dean and others, and uh, the theory is that they don't like them as well as they like speedball right-hand pitchers such as Cooper and Beasley. We'll see whether that's true or not. My experience with the Yankees has been that they like putting your everything in the way of pitching and can hit almost anything. But if Southworth can get away with this one, if he can beat Chandler with White, he is going to be sitting in the driver's seat as I see it as far as the series goes because he can come right back tomorrow with a fellow named Max Lanier, who is his exact a counterpart for White as I could think of. Practically the same size, throws the same way, and they have pretty much the same sort of stuff. Uh, if White wins this afternoon, I'm reasonably sure I can tell you that Cooper will not pitch tomorrow, but will be held for Monday. On the other hand, if the Yankees win, I expect to see Cooper back in there in tomorrow's game here because he's Southwest ace, and you've got to play your ace when you're in trouble. And I repeat that whoever wins this game, the other side definitely is going to be in trouble. And that's the picture as I see it here at the stadium as the Yanks and Cards go into the third game. You regular World Series listeners will recall that on previous broadcasts, we've urged you to lay in a real supply of Gillette Blue Blades. But today, that's all off. Actually, Gillette's current stock of blades is far smaller than the average wholesaler's required inventory. Now, that's due to several things. First, production has been drastically cut by government order to save steel. On top of that, requirements for our armed forces are constantly increasing. And these two points alone, not to mention others, mean less Gillette blue blades for civilian use. So if you run across a store that's out of stock, particularly in defense areas, you'll know why. Of course, we're making every effort to distribute available supplies evenly. Now, no one wants to deprive others of the comfort of shaving with Gillette Blue Blades, so we particularly request that you buy fewer blades and use them thriftily. Don't overstock, and be sure to get maximum service out of every blade. It's easy to do this without sacrificing comfort if you know how, and during the game, we'll tell you several ways to make every Gillette blue blade last longer. At the moment, the band is out in center field, entertaining the crowd. The bleachers are absolutely jam-packed. They've been out there since early this morning, with Al Schacht having come out earlier to do his stuff, to amuse them, to keep things humming and keep interest so they wouldn't get too tired waiting for activity to start on the ball field. Bud Chandler still warming up below our booth, and so is Ernie White of the St. Louis Cardinals. We might give you a quick picture of where our booth is located. It's directly over home plate atop the third deck of the Yankee Stadium so that we have a perfect view of everything in the, in the playing field. The Yankee groundkeepers are putting, putting on the finishing touches. At the moment, they're out at the mound, smoothing things off. A few of them out in right field. The umpires are at home plate talking with each other, awaiting uh, Art Fletcher, who will come out for the Yankees, and Billy Southworth, who will come out for the St. Louis Cardinals. Out in deep center field at the flagpole, and incidentally, the distance from home plate to that point, just to the right of it, is 461 feet, is another of the groundkeepers who has a hold of the long rope by which they hoist up the flag. And that will be raised in a moment, and we, of course, will have the national anthem before the game gets underway. All the Cardinals out in front of their dugout, 
got on some red jackets, looking around the crowd, chatting, apparently very much interested in what's going on in the stands. We don't see any of the Yankees in the front of their dugout as yet, although in the extreme left-hand corner, there is Joe Gordon standing uh, with his chin resting on his hand, awaiting something to take place. George Levy of the stadium, who has been in attendance at 12 World Series and who is always at the Yankee Stadium through the regular season, he's the man who walks out the plate to get the uh, batteries for the day's game, goes over to the public address announcer here and gives them to him. Then they are announced. There's Morton Cooper trotting across back of home plate, just having come out of the runway leading to the Cardinal Clubhouse, trotting over to the uh, St. Louis bench. Johnny Schulte, Yankee coach, has his mitt up under his left arm, is ready to walk out to the bullpen. The bullpen's, by the way, at the stadium. The Yankee bullpen is out between the left field grandstand and the right field bleachers, the left field bleachers, and the uh, visiting team bullpen is located between the right field stands and the right field bleachers, so that the boys have quite a long walk coming in when uh, there's a need for changing pitchers. Well, at the moment, Art Fletcher and Billy Southworth are at home plate with the umpires. Terry Moore, the Cardinal captain, is there. They're discussing the batting orders and ground rules. And before the start of this third World Series game, we'll have uh, time for station identification. We'll pause 10 seconds. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. We're ready for the national anthem. And here it is. the playing of the national anthem, Old Glory is raised to the top of the flagpole in deep center field and being raised right underneath it is the flag or bunting or pennant, whichever you want to call it, emblematic of the Yankees World Championship which they won last year and which they're defending now. There go the Yankees trotting out onto the field and now the ball game is going to get underway. Just listen to the cheers for the Yankees for a moment. Here's the announcement of the batteries, which we've already given to you. We'll let you listen. Number 28, pitching. Cooper, number 15, catching. The battery for New York, Chandler, number 21, pitching. Dickey, number 8, catching. And now Judge Landis, High Commissioner of Baseball, is ready to throw out the ball and does to Bill Dickey. And Dickie trots back to home plate. We're going to be underway in just a moment or so. And to take over and describe for you in his inimitable fashion the first four and a half innings of this third game of the World Series is Red Barber, who is now doing his eighth World Series. One of America's premier baseball announcers, a World Series fixture. And here he is, the old redhead. Thank you very much, Mel. At the moment, out in the heart of the diamond here at Yankee Stadium, Spurgeon Chandler... Limbering up his right arm, throwing down to his battery mate and catcher, Bill Dickey. At first base, Buddy Hassett. At second, Joe Gordon. At shortstop, Phil Rizzuto. And at third is Jerry Pretty, who hits right-handed. And uh, Pretty is getting the nod today with the Cardinals starting a left-hander. Over Roth, the veteran third baseman who played the first two games, but who is a softball swinger. And uh, so once again, the team of Pretty and Rizzuto off shoulder to shoulder. They first came to fame as a second base combination, but since that time, Pretty has been made into a third baseman and utility uh, infielder. In the outfield and left is Charlie Keller, who's busily tying a shoelace at the moment. DiMaggio is in center, and in right is Roy Cullenbein. 
Stepping in to be the first batter for the Cardinals is little Jimmy Brown, a switch hitter, who hits for the equal facility from either side. He has one hit so far in the two games played. He's batting left-handed. Right-handed Chandler comes down, and Brown swinging fouls it off. This is Chandler's second appearance in this World Series. If you recall, he relieved and finally got the Cardinals out after they made four runs with two men down in the ninth inning of the first game. Brown got his hit as uh, one of those Cardinal base hits in that uh, last moment flurry and fuselage at St. Louis in the opener. George Barr of the National League is working balls and strikes back at the plate. The pitch is in there for a call second strike, a big curveball. A right-handed pitcher throwing to a switch hitter batting left-handed. And Chandler's now ahead, nothing in two. No balls, two strikes. It's the game's first hitter. The defense is straight away on Brown, infield up a step. Jimmy swings, beats it down foul. He breaks for first base. In other words, he didn't wait to see whether the ball was fair or foul. Now comes walking back, picks up his stick. And the other three umpires, Big Cal Hubbard is coaching back of first. And uh, Major Kurth, who's just as big of the National League staff, was at second. Now the American League staff is Bill Summers back of third. The uh, umpiring alternates who are dressed and uh, in reserve, if an emergency should arise, are Basil of the American League and Dunn of the National. And still no balls, two strikes. That's the count to Brown. And just a moment, uh, time is called. Plate umpire Barr asked the Cardinal Bat Boy to get back over closer to the dugout. In fact, to get into the dugout. In other words, to get off the playing field. Chandler pumps, delivers. Brown swings and hits it right back to the mound. Chandler takes on a big bounce, throws to first. Plenty of time. Brown is up. One up, and one away. Chandler being ahead of the first hitter all the way through. The pitcher to the first baseman. That's Chandler to Hassett. Terry Moore, Cardinal center field and captain, Moore, stepping in. Right hand batter. He has two eight, hits. He got the first five. hit for the Cardinals, which came in the uh, eighth inning of the first game, and then followed up the next inning in the ninth with a single. Swings and misses at a low outside curve. Chandler really snapped it off, too. He has quite a curve ball. The outfield is around toward left. The biggest hole is right center. Infield straight away on Terry, who crouches, right hand batter. Swings and lines it foul into the lower right field stand. Long second strike. And here Chandler is still staying completely ahead of all the hitters that he's facing. This is his number two batter. A man out. Ball game just began a moment ago with Jimmy Brown bouncing out, pitched to the first baseman. Chandler to Hassett. The game was a few moments uh, delayed in its start. There was a very prolonged discussion over ground rules with the umpires. Here's a pitch. A curve in for call strike three. And Chandler has been uh, the completely dominant factor here at the start. Two up, two men out, and Country Slaughter stepping in. One of the Cardinal heroes in their win, which was the second game. A 10 hitter. He has two hits so far. Takes a curve, good for a call strike. This Chandler isn't fooling around. He's a good size fella, strong. He's always been quite an athlete. Quite a halfback at the University of Georgia in his collegiate days. There's a pitch low inside that has Slaughter skipping rope. Down around his ankles, ball one. And this is the first pitch that hasn't been in the strike area thrown here at the start of the ball game by Chandler. One ball, one strike. Two men out, nobody on, no score. The defense is around toward right slightly. Slaughter takes call, strike two. Quick curve that came in and got the outside. Waist high. One and two. Slaughter stands right off the plate. He's a medium-sized, stocky individual. Heavy hips. Backs out, just kind of waiting on Chandler. Hyenas stepping in again. Outfields that wood. Oh, that, that right down to the end of the handle. Chandler comes down. A school ball. Swung on and missed for strike three. And there was a screwball. He had been throwing a strictly orthodox curveball to the three batters. And then when he got two strikes on Slaughter, he then gave him the screwball. And it was a big one, and it was over the plate, too. If Slaughter hadn't swung, he'd have been called. And so uh, I guess you can't ask much more of a pitcher. He threw out Brown himself, then got a third strike to Moore, and struck out Slaughter swinging on a screwball. And speaking of a screwball, 
The fact that uh, the young man who's now on the mound for St. Louis tried to develop one last September is what began his forearm troubles. White is on the mound for St. Louis. His arm is perfectly all right now. He's telling in the dugout before the ball game that his arm first began to get sore right after Labor Day last year when he started trying to develop a screwball. He hurt something in his elbow. And uh, then when he came back to training camp this year, he made the same mistake again of going after the screwball again. And he hurt his arm seriously enough to where it was uh, sore until two months ago. But he said that he hasn't tried since spring training to break off a screwball, never intends to try again, and the arm is sound again. He's learned his lesson on that. He said somebody else can throw a screwball, but not me. So it's right on the mound for the Cardinals. Back of the plate, Walker Cooper. First base, Johnny Hopp. Second, Jimmy Brown, a shortstop, Slats Marion. Third, George Kurowski, his arm's all right. Stan Musial is in left, in center, Terry Moore, and in right field, Country Slaughter. And the scooter, Bill Rizzuto, stocky um, little speed merchant, right-hand hitter, up at the plate. White takes a little ground. He's a very cool customer to this blonde southpaw. Pumps, comes down. Third ball is running toward third. There's Kurowski up with it, close to first. Not in time, not in time, it's a base hit. made his first pitch, a fastball that was coming down low inside around the knees, and Rizzuto caught it down there on the meat and bunted it neatly toward third. He bunted it just hard enough to where the pitcher couldn't feel it. And by the time that uh, Kurowski got in, the third baseman made the play. He made it uh, faultlessly all right, but there wasn't time, and Rizzuto beat it out for a base hit. And he's on it first, possessor of the game's first hit, and he's the game's only runner. The batter is Buddy Hassett. And across the 10 hitter swings as a high foul back of first and into the stands. It's into the upper tier. And the upper tier at Yankee Stadium is really an upper tier. Three floors here. Main stands. Lower level, the mezzanine, and then the upper deck. That's one strike to Hassett. No score in the ball game. Infield, of course, for the Cardinals. Has to be ready for a bunt. That means Kurowski's in close. Quite a left-hander. Checks his runner. Hop holding it first. The pitch. As it tries to bunt and fouls it off. And, in fact, nicked his thumb. In just a moment. Is he going to be waved out to first base or is he uh, hurt? No, I believe only time is called. A high inside pitch. The bunt was on. And Hassett, in trying to bunt it, uh, hit the left thumb of his finger. You know how a batter would slide his hand up on the barrel of the bat to try and bunt, to get the bat exactly right on the bite of the projectile. And Hassett got a little bit too close. Doc Painter, the Yankee trainer, has met him and is walking with Buddy now back toward the dugout. And it looked, apparently, as though that ball got Hassett on the thumbnail of his left hand. And manager McCarthy has now come over. Of course, that would be a serious thing if Hassett, the uh, regular first baseman, has hurt a finger to where he wouldn't be able to carry on. So time is called, and Rizzuto is still standing at first base. In other words, there was a fine point that we had to uh, wait and see whether the umpires thought that he was hit by the pitch ball or was hit accidentally while he was bunting. And uh, now, according to the move of the uh, plate umpire, that that was a foul that he was trying to bunt the ball, hit the bat first, and then went for the finger, which means it's just a uh, second strike. Hassett's finger is still being checked and administered. Back now underneath the Yankee dugout, we can't see what's going on. Just as soon as he comes out or some other definite moves indicate just what it is, we'll let you know. And uh, whatever happens, whether Hassett can come back or whether he will have to have a replacement, it will be either Hassett or his substitute who will have to come back in the batter's box with the count two strikes. Make no mistake on that. And uh, the runner is at first base, Rizzuto, standing there quietly. So, in case you just uh, joined us, for this third game of the World Series brought to you by Gillette. Here's Hassett coming out now. So he's going to carry on, but he still is uh, clenching and um, probing around that uh, sore finger. For those of you who just joined us, the Cardinals went down one, two, three. Chandler, starting pitcher for the Yankees, being in magnificent form. And the first Yankee up, Rizzuto, wanted the first pitch for a base hit down toward third. And Hassett is now returned to batter's box for the count, no balls, two strikes. Left field to Musial is straight away. Center field to Terry Moore is veered over toward left center. And right field to Slaughter is straight away, which means that the gap in the outfield against Hassett 
is right center. Infield upper step. White looks at first, delivers, and misses with a fastball outside. Ball one. Tried to make Hassett go for one, uh, going away, but he didn't. Sort of flexes that uh, sore left hand a moment. Now grips the bat again. One ball, two strikes. White asks for the sign. Gets it. Stares a while. Now comes in the pitching position, looks at first. Delivers to the plate. A curve high and outside for ball two. And as soon as White turned that ball loose, in other words, that, uh, he immediately went down into a crouch. Because I imagine that when he made that uh, delivery, he thought Rizzuto might be going and he wanted to get out of the way in the event that his catcher was going to fire right back over his head towards second base. But Rizzuto didn't budge. In fact, he's been standing, you might say, suspiciously still at first base. White looks at first, delivers 2 2. Has it swings as a high foul ball that catcher Walker Cooper's under halfway over to the Yankee dugout and grabs for the out. Rizzuto takes a run down off first, bluffing as though he's going for second, and then quickly goes back into first base. Walker Cooper walks the ball back out to the mound. So it is one out. And Hassett was defeated as he attempted, first of all, to sacrifice, and uh, then uh, was retired a foul ball to the catcher. Collin Roy Collin Pine, the switch hitting right fielder, right stepping field. in for the Yankees. He, of course, is uh, going up there as a right hand batter. Left hander Ernie White on the mound for the Cardinals. Outfield is around toward left on Collin Pine. They're playing him to pull. Infield is up a step, except for first baseman Hop was rolling the bag against Rizzuto. Throw to first. Out in time, Rizzuto fading back on ahead. Cullen Bynes sets his feet wide apart and digs in. Crouches. The pitch. Swung on and foul. The curveball. The curve was breaking down. Roy swung above it. Beat it into the ground right underneath the catcher. And apparently nicked the ball because after a quick examination, played on top ball, throws it out. And as he throws it to the ball boy, waves his hand in a negative way, meaning that ball's no good for future use in this game, so get rid of it. New agate. White rubs it. Rubs it a little bit. Uses the rosin bag. No balls, one strike. One man out for the Yankees. No score here in the first inning. First game at the stadium and third game of the series. Draw, who's fast and a threat. Leading down off first. Cullen Bond crouching at the plate. White delivers. Curve swung on a miss. Fast curve. Strike two. Nothing in two. Ernie is working very deliberately. He's quite cool. He doesn't get excited. Defense remains as it was. Left hander steadies the runner. There goes Rizzuto. Carl Bynes swinging. Fouls it off. And it's still strike two. Rizzuto was going. Now he comes trotting back to resume his lead. Whether that was a hit and run play or a run and hit play, you'd have to wait and ask uh, somebody with the Yankees after the ball game. Because you don't know. The batter had two strikes. The pitch was over, so he had to swing. In other words, there could possibly have been uh, a run and hit in which had the pitch been outside, Columbine would have taken and let Rizzuto go on. Anyhow, it's still nothing in two. There's call strike three. A quick curveball catches the outside, and Columbine is caught looking. And that's the first strikeout for White, and it is the second out for the Yankees, and Rizzuto remained at first base. Joe DiMaggio stepping in. Right hand batter. Outfield is deep around toward left. Infield swings well around toward third base. They play this strong six foot right hander to pull toward left. Third base and Karowski is deep. White looks at first. Delivers to the plate. High for ball one. One and all. Oh. Two men out. Rizzuto, who's the game's only runner here in the last of the first inning. Still at first base. Hop is grimly holding the inside corner against him. They're not giving Rizzuto an inch. White looks at first. Delivers to the plate. A curve good for a call strike. Just above the knees. One and one. One ball, one strike. White works with a very easy motion. He doesn't put on any acrobatic show when he's pitching. And he throws his curve ball and fastball with one and the same motion. This is one of the reasons for his success. Steadies first. Delivers to the plate. Strike two swinging. 
Maggio reached for a fastball, low outside. One and two. Fight busily, going to the rosin bag, running up the ball. He's taking no chances. He's not being hurried. He's figuring out every single pitch. It's no score. Just the start of things. Key game. There goes Rizzuto. There's a pitch out. The throw down to second base. There's an overthrow in the center field. Rizzuto is up and on his way for third. Terry Moore recovers, throws to second, and Rizzuto is at third base. Rizzuto was going down. The steal was on. Or you might say a run and hit was on because uh, if the pitch was outside, DiMaggio would take it, which he did. And it uh, was a ball, ball two. The count is now two and two. And uh, Walker Cooper's throw to second with Jimmy Brown going in to take the bag was way high and went into center field. Score that as a steal for Rizzuto off second and he advances to third base on catcher Walker Cooper's overthrow, which is charged as an error. This changes, of course, the complexion of things which uh, Pitcher White had very carefully tried to keep under control. Now Rizzuto's at third. Quite a bit of difference between first and third. Two out, DiMaggio up there, 2-2. Two -two. Pitch is high for ball three, high fastball. So that's a steal for Rizzuto, and an error charged against Walker Cooper. DiMaggio standing out of the box. Let's see time just for the moment. And there's to be a conference now between uh, a plate umpire Baugh, who is the umpire in chief for today's game, and third base umpire uh, Bill Summers. And we'll see just exactly what it is. That, and uh, they uh, apparently, wait, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. There was trouble at St. Louis in the second game about the fact that uh, the Cardinal pitcher was taking his sign off the rubber. You see, in the American League, there's a rule that the pitcher must take his sign while being on the rubber. National League pitchers do not have to take the sign on uh, the rubber. And so at St. Louis, why there, it was allowed to go on despite the Yankee protest. But here in this ballpark, which is an American League park, White has to take his sign from the rubber, and that's what DiMaggio is kicking on just now. 3-2 pitch, swung on a miss, strike three. And DiMaggio struck out on a 3-2 pitch. It is scoreless, and that ends the first inning. And uh, here's a change. Pretty, who began at third base, moves to first base. And Hassett's left hand, I think it is his left thumb, at least uh, it looked that way when he was trying to get that bunt, Hassett's injury forces him out. And Pretty, the uh, utility uh, spare part for the Yankee in a defense, Pretty goes to first base and to still have a right hand hitting third baseman Frankie Crosetti. One time great shortstop for the Yankees goes to third. That's the announcement now coming up over the uh, public address. Number one playing third base Freddie. Number 14 playing first base for New York. And uh, Pretty, who began the ball game and played the first inning at third, is now at first base. And Crosetti makes his first appearance in this World Series as he takes over at third. Now stepping in, as we continue this scoreless third game, first up in the second inning is Stan Musial, left-hand hitter. Bluffs a butt, and then the pitch is over for a call strike. A sharp curve right under his hands over the inside. The Yankee infield now is Jerry Pretty at first base. Joe Gordon at second. Scooter Rizzuto is at short, and at third base, Frankie Crosetti. A pitch, swung on, beaten foul on the ground, back over toward the Cardinal dugout. Here at the stadium, the Yankees use the dugout on the third base side, and the visiting club, which in this case is uh, the St. Louis National League team, uses the dugout on the first base side. Mike Gonzalez coaching back to first. Miller the Kid, manager Southworth, this is his own third base coach. Stan Musial. A tan hitter waiting. Chandler, right hand to throw. Screwball hit down to short. Rizzuto's up with it. Fires his throw to first. In time, Pretty takes it. And Musil is thrown out by a step. Short to first. Happily passed around the Yankee in a defense. It's no score. One man out, nobody on. The Cardinals at bat. Walker Cooper, the catcher, stepping in the batter's box. Here's the second inning. Now it's 
Bill Dickey stays down after giving a sign. Ball working off the catcher's left shoulder, right hand hitter. Walker Cooper takes an outside curve low, ball one. It's just the second ball that Chandler has thrown, and this is the fifth hitter to face it. One and off. Pitch swung on and missed. Curve ball off the hand. And Walker Cooper swung all the way around. That was the force and fury of his swing when he didn't get a hold of it. One and one. Chandler looks into the dirt for a moment. Kicks for this, spikes out in front of the mound. Blows on his hand now, finally directs his gaze and takes the sign from Dickey. Big catcher comes up high at the pitch. Screwball hit down to short. Rizzuto up with it on a big bounce, throws over to first. Plenty of time, Walker Cooper's out for four steps. And that's the second time that Chandler has thrown that screwball. So, two Cardinals up, both of them thrown out by shortstop Rizzuto. Rizzuto to Pretty, and Johnny Hopp stepping in. Cardinals have not changed their batting order, except for the pitchers throughout the series. In other words, Southworth is standing pat. Hop stands midway in batter's box. Swing that stick from the end. Pitch. Over for a strike, and there was another screwball. That one came on the inside by the hand and broke back from a left hand hit and over the plate. Channel looks around. Two out, nobody on St. Louis, second inning. Hop swings and misses with a curveball under his hands. And it is nothing in two. Hop walks out of the box to sort of compose himself for the moment. Now gets in again. Southworth cups his hands around his mouth. Hollis him back a third. You can do it, Johnny. Chandler throws. It's a screwball, which is hit down to short. Rusudo grabs it. Throws to first. Plenty of time. Hop out about two steps. And Chandler, taking uh, complete usage of that screwball, had the three batters in the second inning all hit right down to the left side and all get thrown out at short. So it is still no score. And that ends the first half of the second inning. I hate to go technical on you, but in a few brief words, I want to give you what's behind this positive statement. In all the world, there isn't a razor blade as sharp, as easy shaving, or as long lasting as the Gillette Blue Blade. Men, manufacturing is directed by graduate specialists in metallurgy, chemistry, physics, mechanics, even electronics. These experts and the skilled operators in all departments are provided with every facility to produce blades of unmatched keenness and uniformity. There are high powered microscopes wherever you turn, Vickers hardness testers, and other devices usually found only in scientific laboratories. Most of the manufacturing equipment is Gillette designed and Gillette built. Five ton sharpening machines, microscopically adjusted, grind and hone the blades in filtered oil before the delicate strapping operation. Automatically controlled furnaces temper the steel to glass cutting hardness. Yes, in department after department, more and more reasons why the Gillette Blue Blade gives you more shaves more quickly and easily. No score on. Just had one hit in the ball game. Bunt single by Rizzuto in the first inning. And here's Gordon. First up for the Yankees. Last of the second inning. Our field is around toward left on Joe. They play him to pull. Infield is swung a step toward third. Panda White finishing his sophomore season with the Cardinals. Takes a full pitching stretch. Throws. Fastball over the outside for a call strike. Gordon is working deep back in the box for a right-hand hitter. Stands with his rear foot solidly on the back line of the box. Feet relatively close together and moves around a lot. Swings from the end. Leans into the plate. Swings on the curve. Falls it right back on the screen. Strike two. Nothing in two. First man up. Last for the second inning. Art Fletcher. As usual, has been for years and years. Third base coach for the Yankees. And Earl Combs, first base coach. Patrick Cooper, after giving the sign, remains down on his haunches. Keeps pounding his fist into the pocket of his mitt. <laughs> Throw. Swung on the miss. A low outside curveball. That's the fourth time they've struck him out on that low outside curve. Not in today's game, I mean for the whole series. And this is strikeout number three for White. It's the fifth strikeout that we've had so far in the ball game as Chandler has struck out two. And White now, uh, you might say, is in a rut because he's just 
struck out the last three men that he's faced. One up, one away, last of the second inning. No score. It's all pitching. And here he is, Charlie Keller. He really smoked one at St. Louis. Takes a high, fast curve inside. Ball one. White turn that one to loose. He can throw hard. Keller crowding that face behind his left-hand batter. Gets tired of waiting. Walks out. Now steps in. Keller's pumping that stick. White pitches. Charlie swings, and there's a ground ball back at first. Hop is up with it. There's the race. And the first baseman wins by a step. Keller is out. Ground ball that was hit sharply back at first base. And that breaks the sequence of White's strikeouts. He had uh, struck out three men straight. Cullen Bynum and demand Jody in the first inning and Gordon to begin the splash to the second. And now Bill Dickey getting in. Dickey, number eight, catcher, not fast. Dickey sets. He and DiMaggio are tied, each having the, for the most uh, base hits so far, each having four. Up the around to it right on Bill. A ten hitter. White delivers. Dickey swings. There's a drive into right center for a base hit. And Dickey comes up with his fifth hit, a single. And he now has more hits than anybody else. And Dickey didn't try to slug that ball. He timed a high curve and hit it right over second base. A high line drive, you would call it. And it is a single for Dickey. Score that into right center, which is hit number two for the Yankees and hit number two for the ball game. Getting in now is Jerry Pretty for his first at bat in this 1942 World Series. Played the first inning at third base. And then when Hassett uh, was hurt, he got his thumb in the way of the pitch when he was trying to bunt. First inning, Pretty has shifted over to first. Right hand hitter in a crouch and overly close stance. Takes a curve low inside, out in front of the shins. Ball one. Dickey, of course, ready to go on anything is at first. And Hop is halfway off the bag. He's not holding Dickey tightly on, as they do not figure that Bill, who uh, not as fast as he used to be, will be going down. There's a pitch over. Fastball nicely, just up above the knees, over the inside. One and one. Quite right, another look at first. Delivers a change of pace curve, which is fouled into the stands. Stands right back of the Cardinal dugout. Here is one uh, little uh, note that may tell you something about uh, how the two ball clubs are approaching this ball game at this moment. There is not uh, a Yankee player standing at the front of the Yankee dugout. They're all sitting back in the dugout. While there isn't a Cardinal player sitting in the back of the dugout, they're all up on the steps at the front of the dugout. One ball, two strikes. Dickey at first, two out, no score. Pass to the second. Pretty crouches, white throws. There's a curve hit foul out along left field and into the stands, the upper stands. Still one and two. Pretty back. Trying the palms of his hands. Ernie moves a little dirt. He's pitching as though he had all day. And if you ask his manager, he'd say he has got all day. He pitched the way he wants to. Throw. Fastball swung on as a fly ball into center. Terry Moore. Under it, under it. And gathers it in with one of those soft handed catches. So, no runs, one hit, one man left. The Yankees, no errors for the Cardinals, total for the last of the second, and the full totals for two innings. No runs, no hits, and one error for the Cardinals. No runs, two hits, and no errors for the Yankees. End of two. And this third game of the 1942 World Series is coming to you from the Yankee Stadium in New York. And now we're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. In the third inning, George Kurowski first up, followed by Slet Marion, and then by Ernie White. Now Chandler is ready to pitch first of all to Kurowski, right-hand hitter. George runs up his with bunt and takes a curve that's low outside, and it goes for ball one. One and all. Kurowski is a pull hitter, as they say in the trade, right-hand batter who pulls to left. Takes a fastball low outside, and it's the first time Chandler has come close to being behind on a hitter. Two and all. Two balls, no strikes. This is 
is the last third of the Cardinal batting list swinging into action here in the third inning. Chandler pumps, right-hander throws, fastball over, but low under the knees, and Kowalski is ahead, three and all. George Setz, he's a blocky fellow, and his very determination is the reason he is standing in home plate this afternoon. One of the two bones in his right wrist is missing. There's the strike. In this case, the automatic strike. All the channel had to do was get it over. Crosby was taking three and one. When George was a kid of 11, he had to have an operation. Four inches of one of those wrist bones was cut off. Swings and fouls the next pitch down, and it's now three and two. And if you could see his arm right now, which has uh, grown twisted, as those muscles have had to overly develop in order to take up the slack of uh, one of the two wrist bones being missing, well, then you would realize that there's a fellow with a baseball heart. If he didn't have it, he wouldn't be here. Three and two, full count. Chandler comes down. Ball four. Kowalski very coolly took a pitch on the outside. This is the first cardinal runner, and it's the first base on balls given up by either hurler in this uh, first game of the series for the stadium and uh, game three for the series. Tall, slender shortstop. Martin Marion. Better known. Brown baseball circles the slats because of his physique. Steps in. Right hand hitter. Takes a pitch on the outside, a curve. He looked his way with punt, then let it go. Pretty is naturally holding first base against Kurowski. Presetti, who was playing third, came on the second inning. Hassett had to retire, hurting his left thumb, trying to bunt. Presetti right off the bag, ready to run in. The pitch swung on and fouled. Across the third baseline. And as he scoops it up. Ball dying as it got down to him. One and one. Marion has one hit. He tripled in the ninth inning. Two men out. The first game to knock in the first two Cardinal scores. Here's a long, tall drink of water. The way he plants his feet, he's just standing from over here to over yonder. Chandler stretches, comes down position. Delivers to the plate. There's a bunt. Back to the mound. Chandler feels it. The throw has to go to first. And Marion is out. By a step. Close play at that. Sacrificing and moving Karaski down to second. And the Cardinals now have a runner in scoring position. Should a base hit be forthcoming. A walk and a sacrifice. The out was uh, the pitcher coming up with a bunt and uh, throwing over to uh, first base. Karaski <coughs> slid in towards second. And now the umpires are going to have a conference right now. The uh, McCarthy has come out. And let's see uh, just what this uh, protest is right now. Out at first. Pretty, the first baseman, backed up, took that throw. One man away. McCarthy, Fletcher of the Yankees, Southworth of the Cardinals, uh, and uh, Crisetti of the Yankees were talking to uh, Barr and Summers, and now... This must be something, uh, in other words, there must be an interpretation which is not the same for the two leagues that has come up. Because now uh, Summers and Barr have called in Hubbard and Major Kurt. So the four umpires, two from each major circuit, um, are getting into a huddle right now. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens on the playing field to see just what it is, if we can see it. Some um, question is raised, and it took all four umpires to discuss it. A moment. Uh, Kowalski is being called out at second base. Let's see, Terry Moore is uh, started to come out of the Cardinal dugout. See, Kowalski is being waved back to first. Now Kowalski is at first base. Just a moment. And here is uh, Marion coming back to a batter's box. Well, now, I can, I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, that that was not a foul bunt at all. That ball was bunted right back to the mound. We're waiting for word to come up from uh, the press section because it, uh, maybe the announcer on the field has phoned in. So Marin is now back at the plate, and Karaski is back at first. Forget the sacrifice. There is nobody out in the third inning. One ball, two strikes. Marion swings. There's a trickle back to the mound. And Chandler has to play over to first base. Marion is safe. Beats it out for a scratch single.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have not been informed as to why Marion, uh, after his sacrifice, and apparent out at first, was ordered to come back. The only thing we know is that on that pitch to Marion, it could not have been a legal pitch. And uh, White is coming up to hit now for St. Louis. When Marion was brought back, he topped one, a squib single, as they call it, a high bouncer down toward third that the pitcher had to feel, and Marion beat it out. So Cardinals are at first and second. Rouse gets second, Marion at first, nobody out, and pitcher White up, he's a right-hand batter. The Yankees looking for a bunt, and White bunts. Chandler has to throw to first base. The throw goes to first in, in time, and that's all for White. And his sacrifice moves the runners along. Karowski to third, and Marion to second. So now we do get a sacrifice here in the third inning. Pitcher White helps his own cause, and uh, the play is taken at first base by second baseman Jordan. Now to go back once again to that Marion situation, either the ball uh, was ruled to have been foul and then to trickle out to the mound after hitting the batter, that could have been a possibility, or else there was something about the illegality of the pitch. But when we find out what the umpires do, we'll let you know. Right now, the situation, and we know this, runners at second and third, Jimmy Brown up, hitting left-handed, takes a strike, fastball under the hands, over the inside. And the Cardinals now are putting on the first real major threat of the ball game. It is scoreless. Either way, Karaski is at third, Marion at second, the outfield is straight away, and the Cardinals have uh, one of their great little money players up there, Jimmy Brown, who's very tough in the clutch. We have just been notified from the press box that the umpires ruled, and it took four of them to decide it in a conference, that that attempted sacrifice play of Marion's was, after all, a foul ball. So, that is what we have been informed now is the official reason for the replay of the situation. We knew it either had to be a foul ball or an illegal pitch. That's the only way it could have been called back. Now, let's see. No score, but the Cardinals threatening. They got something cooking here at Yankee Stadium. This is the key out right now for the Cardinals if they hope to score one from an out. Chandler, full pumping motion. Delivers. Brown swings and hits it back over the mound towards second. Gordon makes the play to first. Brown is out, but a run comes in. Jimmy Brown, determined to get a piece of that ball, did. And bounced it on a big hop right over the mound. Gordon had to make the play, the second baseman, right up against the bag. Brown was thrown out by a step at first. Jarowski scored, and thus the walk given up by Chandler came home in the form of a run to haunt him. And Marion moves down to third, where he now is with two out. Captain Terry Moore, right-hand batter up. Swings and misses. Fastball. Strike one. Run batted in for Jimmy Brown and the Cardinals. Go ahead, one to nothing. Outfield round toward left. More swings and there's a foul ball over by the Yankee dugout. Dickey's going over, Crosetti comes down and Crosetti gets a glove on it and falls down. And the ball is not caught. The ball was hit right between where the third baseman and the catcher, either one could have gotten it. Crisetti kept hollering, Dickey kept going. We couldn't, in other words, we were looking at Crisetti so we could see him holler. Uh, Dickey had his back to us the way he was running. Down toward third, we couldn't tell whether he was hollering or not, but he kept going. And finally, uh, Crisetti dove for the ball, and in trying to grab the ball and get away from Dickey, too, he just uh, hit the ball with his glove and didn't hold it, and no error is to be charged. It is just strike two to Terry Moore. Two on for the Cardinals. They're ahead one to nothing. Marion is the third. Moore takes a... Call strike. Strike three. Curveball. It's the second time that Chandler has curved him for the third strike. That's the third strikeout. And it is now one to nothing in favor of St. Louis. And that ends the first half of the third inning. Are you handy with tools? Have you any feeling at all for mechanics? If so, there's a special place for you and a mighty vital one in the United States Army. Men, this is a mechanized war we're fighting. Behind every flyer, every tank crew, Dozens of men are needed to maintain America's war machines and keep them hitting and hitting hard. Right now, we're below our quota of skilled mechanics needed for this imperative job. So this is an appeal to you men who are radio operators, electricians, sheet metal workers, garage mechanics, watchmakers, and tractor experts to come to the aid of your country. 
You can be taught in short order to repair arms, check bomb racks, keep precision instruments working. If you're between 18 and 44, single or married, go to your nearest Army recruiting station and ask for enlistment as a specialist, where you'll find the greatest opportunity for service and advancement. Don't put it off a day. This is urgent. Uncle Sam needs you. Go to your nearest Army recruiting station quickly. One to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. And first up for the Yankees in the last of the third is their pitcher, Chandler. Right-hand batter. He'll be followed by the top of the order, Rizzuto, and then by Crisetti. Outfield toward right on Spud, who takes a curve low inside after bluffing a bunt. 4-1. Biggest hole in the outfield against Chandler, despite his being a right-hand batter, is left center. Towards the Cardinals, figure the way White is pitching, that Chandler is not going to be pulling. Throw. Fastball outside. Ball two. Two and off. Now White looks down into the ground, and there comes a star now from the Yankee partisans as they see White now defending one run. Uh, get behind on the pitcher who's first up uh, two to nothing. And Fred on Pop Ball walks out in front of the mound and calls for White to come down and talk to him. And here's Brown coming over from second base. He wants to be certain that any discussion that involves the pitcher is not going to be such as going to get his pitcher upset. And now there's Catcher Walker Cooper going out. And here's manager Southworth coming out. And uh, they are protesting, apparently, uh, White taking the sign either from or not being on the pitching rubber. In other words, the two leagues have two definite interpretations on it. In other words, you'd be surprised to know at uh, how many of those apparently small points the two major leagues are at variance. I mean, the game is basically the same, but in some of those fine shadings of interpretation, one league goes this way and one goes the other. And this, uh, I believe, it's been years and years since any uh, difference between uh, the style of play and the rules and regulations of the two leagues has caused so much uh, of a controversy. And maybe that this has been brought up on the part of the Yankees to try and uh, get the young Cardinal pitchers excited. That uh, we don't know. Now White goes back to work and pitches over for a strike. Right over. Two balls, one strike. Ernie moving around. Chandler crowding the plate from behind. Right-hand batter. First man up, last to the third. One and nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Chandler swings and misses. High fastball. Strike two. One and two. Uh, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. White set. Throws. Strike three swinging. A fastball in there. Chandler struck out. And for the cool left-hander, this is his fourth strikeout. One up, one down, last to the third. One to nothing, favor the Cardinals. Got their run without hitting the ball out of the infield in the top of the third inning. Walk, dribble single, halfway to third base, followed by a sacrifice and infield out. Rizzuto takes a fast curve inside at the knees. I guess uh, White threw that one in there with the idea, well, if you're going to bump the first pitch as you did on him in the first inning, jump on it. One and all. Rizzuto has two hits for the series. He's one for one today. Swings and there's a line drive right at third baseman Kowalski who grabs it for the out. Two up, two down, last to the third. And Frank Crosetti is stepping in. He's a veteran of many a World Series ball game, but this is his first at-bat in this 1942 series. He uh, set out the first two games and went in in the infield emergency created by Hassett hurting his left thumb, trying to bunt in the first inning. Crosetti hitting right-handed. He's a little fellow, but has surprising power at times. Crouches over the plate and takes ball one. Curve ball in by his hands. One and all. Two out. Nobody on. Outfield round toward left. Frankie crouches over the plate slightly ahead of it. Takes ball two. He's a good goaltender up there. That pitch didn't miss by much, but he took it. Ball two, two and all. White shakes no. Now nods yes. His catcher stays low, back of the plate. Strike. And Crescenti moving around, trying to uh, misdirect the aim of the pitcher 
Finally had to jump back out of the way. He was right up against the plate. Pitch came over. Ball strike. Two and one. Now Frank digs in. So that to stick about two inches. Never still. White throws. Clearly swinging. Falling it back. Going after a fastball. It was in there. Two and two. Two balls. Two strikes. Jimmy Brown hollering it up down at second base. Jimmy's really a twitching chili, too. He's never still. Always moving around, patting the ground with his spikes, looking around, checking the position of each infielder. He's in the major leagues, primarily because of his disposition, his baseball disposition. 2-2 pitch, swung on, and there's a high foul. Coming up and back, Cooper chases back, and he can't get it. It's back up onto the screen. 2-2. Two and, two. and the catcher, very carefully now, walks back toward the plate. And quite a sprint. He came carrying back to the stand. Two two. Two down. Nobody on. White looks out toward the scoreboard, so checking the count for his own information. Now the trim left hander pumps, delivers. Swung on and missed for strike three. A high outside curveball that, as a matter of strict reporting, I don't think would have been in there for a strike. And that um, is the fifth strikeout for White. And uh, it is still one to nothing in favor of the Cardinals, and that ends the third inning. It is impossible to produce a blade as sharp, as easy shaving, or as long lasting as today's Gillette Blue Blade without the technical knowledge, skilled craftsmanship, and specialized equipment to be found only at World Shaving Headquarters. First up in the fourth inning, Country Slaughter, who struck out swinging on a screwball thrown by Spurgeon Chandler in the first inning. Slaughter swings on the first pitch and beats it off foul on the ground. Strike one. Slaughter, uh, you might say, was the closest thing to uh, being a goat in the first game, and he certainly was a great star in the second game, which goes to show that the old adage in baseball is really true. It doesn't make any difference about today. Forget it. There's always tomorrow. Anyone who's been around baseball long enough knows that you can be a hero today, and it doesn't help you at all tomorrow, and vice versa. Channel delivers. As a fastball hit down toward first base, Pretty is up with his steps on the bag and starters out by three feet. I want to change that. I said fastball. It looked like a fastball when he was thrown. However, it broke a screwball just at the plate and Slaughter hit it off the end of the bat and pulled it down toward first. About half speed. It was an easy play for Pretty, the first baseman. One up, one out. First baseman unassisted. And here's Stan Musial, who bounced out uh, short to first in the second inning. He has one hit, but that one was for the money. Takes a curve low inside. Or one. He had the hit that drove in the winning run for the Cardinals in the second game. Outfield, step toward right. Musial braces, swings and misses, and goes all the way around. He winds up on himself when he uh, doesn't connect. He's rangy. Sort of a bill like um, Teddy Williams. This fellow just wind up like a corkscrew when they swing. Don't hit. Chandler blows in his right hand a little bit. One of his pitching mannerisms. Puts the glove, rubs the ball for the moment. Things get sort of quiet. Usual digs in the pitches. A lot of ball swung on and belted in the center field for a line drive. It's a single. DiMaggio juggles the ball but recovers in time and Musial holds it first. It's a close line. Line drive hit by Stan Musial, his second World Series hit. And this is, uh, without a doubt, the hardest hit ball we've had today. That is, it's gone safe. Uh, Rizzuto hit a hard line drive in the third inning but right at uh, Kowalski, the third baseman. Now with one man out, Stan Musial, who can run, leads off first, pretty holding against him, and the hitter is Walker Cooper, right-hand hitting catcher. There's a curve, outside, ball one. One and all. Hot field, a couple of steps, round toward left. Cooper got uh, a very punishing blow in the second game as far as Bonham was concerned. Double. 
swings and there's a high fly out of the short center. DiMaggio's coming in. Gordon's going back from second, and the second baseman grabs it. Joe Gordon. That's all for catcher Walker Cooper. Two out, top of the fourth. Musial, now ready to start to scratching gravel. Anything here in the fourth. He's at first. Because of his speed and because of the way the Cardinals like to run, Pretty is holding first. The batter is Johnny Hop. Hitting left handed. Digs in. I feel a step toward right. Hop takes a pitch right over. Fastball. Call strike. Southworth hollering encouragement. Well, of course, it might be a word sign. Back of third. Mike Gonzalez isn't saying anything. He's just staring at the pitcher now. Hop takes, and there goes Musial. The throw down to second base is in time, and Musial is cut down. Shortstop Rizzuto taking Dickey's strike. Right into second base. And uh, Musial is cut down, trying to steal. Catch it to the shortstop. Still one to nothing. Favor the Cardinals. And that ends the first half of the fourth inning. We had certainly be out of line urging you fans to use fewer razor blades unless we told you how to do it. The most important thing, and I can't emphasize this too strongly, is beard preparation. Yes, it'll surprise you how many more comfortable shaves per blade you get if you prepare your face properly. Many of us just give our beards a lick and a promise. Call it enough and begin shaving. But the first thing to do is wash your face with soap and plenty of water. That starts the process of beard softening and removes particles of grit that dull the blade. Next, apply shaving cream. And if you use lather cream, do a good job of lathering. Use lots of water. Saturate the whiskers thoroughly. When you realize that a dry bristle is almost, if not equally, as hard as copper wire, you know how important this is. Another hint. Never remove your Gillette Blue Blade for cleaning. Just loosen the razor handle, hold under hot water, and shake dry. Thus, you avoid possible damage to the super keen edges from needless handling. Follow these easy suggestions and we guarantee even more shaves and easier shaves from every Gillette Blue Blade. First up now in the last of the fourth is Roy Cullenbein, a switch hitter, who's batting right-handed against left-hander Ernie White of St. Louis. White pitches, a curve low inside. That made Cullenbein back up a step. Made him move his feet. 4-1. One to nothing, favor St. Louis. It's steady, very careful, and consistently fine pitching so far. Boy swings as a long foul, getting to the upper left field stands. One and one. White took just a little bit off of his fastball, and Cullen Bine, swinging out in front of it, pulled it high and foul. One and one. Outfield is deep on Roy. He's a big, strong fella. And the outfield is drastically around toward left. Stretch this on the field of more. Fastball over. The outside just above the knees for a call. Second strike. One and two. Colin Bond holding that stick within a half an inch of the knob. Takes a low curve. Took good eyes. Take that one too. Ball two. Two and two. First man up. Last to the fourth. Big end swing into action for the Yankees here in the last of the fourth. Cullen Bind into Maggio, then Gordon. White comes down, swung on as a high foul ball, back of first base. Hop is over, close to the stands, and makes the catch. And Cullen Bind fouls out to the first baseman. One up, one away. And the batter is DiMaggio, who was struck out swinging to retire the side in the first inning and leave Rizzuto at third. Joe steps in. I feel around toward left. Why right, Joe spreads those feet. White pumps, delivers. Joe swinging, fouls it back. Went after a fastball. Strike one. White on the mound. Walker Cooper, the receiver. Cardinal infield is hot. Brown. Martin Karowski. The outfield is Musial, Moore, Slaughter. Maggio waiting motionless now. Here's the pitch. Swung on as a line drive for a base hit into left field. 
It is a long single for DiMaggio. Musial recovering on the third skip in left center. Throwing in the second, and DiMaggio is on. He is the first Yankee to get on some sticky single with two out in the second inning. This is the tying run at first for the Yankees. That for DiMaggio is his fifth hit, and he and Dickey are once again tied in the duel to see who will have the most hits in the series. Each now has five. And that was a solid smack by DiMaggio and hit number three for the Yankees. Hit number five for the game. Joe Gordon, who was struck out on a low outside curve in the second inning. Set for his second at bat. Joe uh, has one hit this year. DiMaggio at first. Hop pulling the bag against him. The outfield around toward left on Gordon. White throws. And Gordon takes a strike. He made sort of a half swing. And he comes back around to protest now to a uh, plate umpire bar. Keller has come up, and he is squawking. And it is Keller now who is squawking. There was a half swing call against uh, Gordon. And Barr shakes his head, tries to walk away from the two. Now he's trying to walk away from him again, back up to the plate. It's a strike call against Gordon. Keller, who's waiting to hit next in the ring. Came up, made a uh, very vigorous protest. Now Gordon's back in again, and it is a strike. White looks at first, throws to the plate. Gordon takes a high curve, and it is ball one. One and one. That's always a tough play for a numpire to have to call is that half swing, because you can't win. No matter which way you call it, the other side's on you. One and one. White looks at first. Lives to the plate. Gordon swings and misses. There was a fastball on the outside, just above the knees. Now it is one and two. One ball, two strikes. White working carefully. Gordon sets. Major at first, one out. One to nothing, St. Louis. There's a curve swung on it, foul back. That was a high curve. Over. One and two. Fletcher pacing up and down, back to third. Holds up one finger. Indicating to the major, just one out. Earl Coombs cups his hands, hollers something up to the plate to Gordon. White working uh, very smoothly. Steadily delivers. Gordon swings as a fly ball hit high into left center. Musial falls down and gets up. Moore goes on, and it's Musial for the catch. DiMaggio all the way to second base, hurries and gets back to first. It looked for the moment like there might be trouble. On uh, first, uh, because Musial fell down. He's been having trouble with his uh, footing so far all through the series. And uh, then he got up and started after the ball, and uh, Terry Moore had really set sail seeing Musial fall. And at first, uh, Moore thought that he would have to make the catch. And for the moment, it looked as though the two might collide in left center. But Moore, being the old and the more experienced, got out of the way and let the rookie go ahead for the catch, the left fielder. So it is two out. And stepping in is Keller, who grounded out to first baseman Hop unassisted in the second inning. At field deep, round toward right. One to nothing, favor the Cardinals. Keller, very rough customer with that lumber, crouches, takes a curve over for a call strike. Running in one. DiMaggio ready to go now in anything. Stepping down off first. And Hop is about three steps off the bag. He's not holding uh, first base tightly against the runner. White works. Keller swings. There's a high pop fly and a very short right. There is right fielder Slaughter coming in under it and makes the catch. Now that's all for the Yankees in the last of the fourth inning. No runs. One hit. One man left at the end of uh, four innings. It is um, one run, two hits, and one error for St. Louis. No runs, three hits, and no errors for New York. And that ends the fourth inning. And ladies and gentlemen, we can't applaud too highly, and we cannot cooperate too deeply with the American Red Cross in its blood donor program, which is a program that simply means the sustaining and the saving of the very lives of the men in our armed forces who all over the world, every hour of every day, 
risked those very lives in our behalf. And we as civilians are vital cogs in that program because it is up to us as individuals to make appointments and to go in and to give a pint of our blood for the saving of the life of one of our men. So on behalf of the men in our armed forces, let us on this World Series broadcast ask you to cooperate by contacting your local American Red Cross chapter and asking how you may best help. We're going to the fifth inning. Hop first up, Chandler works. Hop swings, rounds it foul, sharp foul, back of first. Gonzalez waved it goodbye. You know, these uh, coaches are very cute, you know. A foul that comes down, it's on the right bounce, not too hard hit, while they'll make the play and play around with the fans. But when they're really tagged, after all, they know they're only going to have five things on one hand, too. Strike one, Johnny Hop first up in the fifth. Magnificent pitching. It's one to nothing, favor the Cardinals. And they got that run without getting the ball out of the infield in the third inning. In fact, without hitting the ball hard. Chandler delivers. There's a pitch high for ball one. One ball, one strike. Upsets. I feel step toward right. Johnny swings as a ground ball down to short. Rizzuto is up with it. Throws in time by a half step. And Hop is out. That is a magnificent uh, forearm throw that Rizzuto has. It's one of the best in the business. Every great infielder throws with his forearm primarily. That's what saves a step, cuts a runner down. In other words, you could tie an infielder's arm against his side, that is, uh, from the elbow up, and he could still throw using just his forearm. Rizzuto snapped out Hop. And here's George Karowski. Gets away from a high inside curve. Ball one. Karowski was walked in the third inning and was later turned into the game's only run. One up, one away, up of the fifth. There's a half-line drive, hit the short, and Rizzuto grabs it at the knees for the out. The ball was hit into the hole between third and short, not too hard. A soft line drive, and uh, Rizzuto, cutting over to his right, grabbed it, reaching down by his knees. And it is two up, two down for St. Louis. That's Marion. Takes a fast call strike. Nothing in one. Two out, nobody on. Top of the fifth. Santa throws. Marion swings and misses, going all the way around. Strike two. That was a uh, three quarter speed curve that time. That was a curve that uh, the pitcher would say, well, I just rolled it in there. Throw. Swung on as a bounding ball wide of third. Up with it is Crosetti. Throws in time by two steps. Two steps for the average man. One step for this long legged like shortstop. And he's out. Third to first. And it's nothing across in the top of the fifth inning. So it is one to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. A brilliantly pitched ball game that is going down to the last half of the fifth. And coming into the microphone is Mel Allen, who will take over for the rest of the ball game. There is an urgent. And uh, Mel, uh, let me say that uh, it is a real pleasure to be working with you on this series. And let me say to the listeners that from my vantage point, uh, hearing what you as the announcers say and seeing the play that you're describing, that you're doing a magnificent job. Congratulations. And uh, I'm going to sit back and here you go on the last half of this vital ball game. Thank you very much, Red. An announcement was just made over the public address system here at the stadium. In case you're wondering what it was about, Red told you all about it for the uh, first half of the fifth inning when he told you about the blood donor drive of the American Red Cross. As we come into the last half of the fifth inning with the St. Louis Cardinals leading one to nothing, we'll have Bill Dickey, Jerry Pretty, and then Spud Chandler coming up in that order. Plate umpire George Barr dusts off the plate, Walker Cooper behind, goes down in the crouch. Ernie White, the left hander, working for the Cardinals, kicks the dirt from out in front of the rubber. Getting set to come in with the first pitch to Bill Dickey as we get set for the last half of the fifth inning. Ernie White looks in, checks his sign. Outfield deep toward right for Dickey. Ernie into the windup, here's his pitch. It swung on to drive out second base. Jimmy Brown's in front of it, picks it up on one hop, throws over to hop high, but in time for the out. 
One away as Bill Dickey bounces out second to first, Brown to hop. Dickey had single to right in the second inning for one of the Yankees' three hits, which they've gotten off white. First one being a bunt, which Phil Rizzuto beat out in the first inning. The third one a single by Joe DiMaggio in the fourth. Here's Jerry Pretty. Fly to Terry Moore in the second inning. Bats him right-handed. White goes into the windup. Whips the left arm around. The pitch is a sweeping curve inside for ball one. Whitey Kowalski's at third. Marty Marin at short. Jimmy Brown on second. Johnny Hop on first. Walker Cooper catching. Ernie White pitching. Stan Musial's in left. Terry Moore in center. Ina Slaughter in right. Pretty cocks it bat up over his right shoulder. The pitch comes in. It's a pop-up. Down to Johnny Hop in short right. He's crossing the foul line. Makes the catch. It's in foul territory. Cal Hubbard umpiring at first base. Signals across the foul line into foul territory. And so they're two down as Pretty fouls out to Johnny Hop. Coming up now is Bud Chandler. Getting a ripple of applause from the fans as he goes in to take his place in the batter's box. Chandler took a third called strike in the third inning, his first time at bat. Bats him right-handed. He had 15 hits during the regular season and 71 times at bat for a batting average of 211. Give you an indication of the kind of uh, hitter he is for a pitcher. First uh, offering is outside from Ernie White for ball one. Outfield playing Chandler just a step or so toward right and center and right straight away in left. Chandler stands deep in the batter's box in close to the plate. Ernie White's next pitch to him is swung on and fouled off on the ground into the Cardinal dugout. Sort of got the handle part of the bat on that one. Swinging late on the fastball. One and one the count on Spud. Phil Rizzuto is on one knee just in front of the batter's circle. He'll hit next if Chandler should get on base. Two men out, nobody on. One to nothing, favor the Cardinals. Last half of the fifth inning. Kurowski third is in position to guard that third baseline. Here's the pitch to Chandler. He swings and he misses. Cut hard. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. That's the count. Don't forget tomorrow we'll be on the air a half hour later than today. So make a note now to be with us at 1.45 Eastern Wartime tomorrow. Remember, 1.45 Eastern Wartime for the fourth game of this 1942 World Series. Ernie White's next pitch to Chandler. Swung on to slow roller down the third baseline, but it's foul. Count remains. One ball, two strikes. Tomorrow, being Sunday, ball games in New York start a little bit later than they do otherwise. As a matter of fact, there's a law which prohibits a game from starting before 2 o'clock. That'll be the starting time of the game. Of course, we'll be on the air 15 minutes ahead of game time. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Ernie White ready. Here's his pitch. Chandler swings and hits a long fly ball deep in the left field, but it's curving foul and just grazing the upper deck, hitting the bunting and dropping down below. Spud got a hold of that one, pulled it into the stands and deep left. One ball, two strikes. Chandler holds that bat down to the end of the handle, knees bent. He loves to get his base hits, as does any pitcher. He says one of these days he's going to drive one out of the lot. Next pitch to him, Chandler swings and sends a high hopper down toward third. Karaski coming in fast, takes in the one hop, running halfway across the field, throws to hop in time for the out. And so that's all for the Yankees. The last of the fifth, out in order, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. The score at the end of five innings, one nothing Cardinals. St. Louis, one run, two hits, one error, one left on. The Yankees, no runs, three hits, no errors, and three men left on base. And that ends the fifth inning. To produce a blade as sharp, as easy shaving, and as long-lasting as today's Gillette Blue Blade is such a meticulous operation that the dyes, tools, specialized machines, and instruments employed are largely designed and built by Gillette's own technicians. Therefore, you find no counterpart of this blade anywhere in the world. As we get ready to go into the first half of the sixth inning, Ernie White, Cardinals left-hander, be the first batter and is getting a nice round of applause from the crowd, as you can hear in the background. Listen for a moment. And he dies down as Ernie White steps into hitting position. White sacrificed in the third inning. Bats him right-handed. On deck is Jimmy Brown. Then will come Terry Moore as we skip to the top of the batting order after White has his turn at the plate. 
Spurgeon Chandler blows on his pitching hand. Has a sign from Bill Dickey. He, too, swoops way down low as he goes into the windup. Overhand curveball, fast curve outside. Ball one. Ball hit Bill Dickey on the arm and uh, bounced off. Tucks his mitt up under his right arm as he shakes off the little sting. Right on above the uh, wrist on his left hand, which is his mid hand. Not his meat hand, but his mid hand. The next pitch, outside, low, ball two. Two nothing to count on Ernie White. Frankie Cressetti comes over from third talking to Spurgeon Chandler. Frankie's a great holler guy. As Red indicated to you earlier, you can hear his shrill voice piercing the atmosphere way up here. Chandler throws, White takes a fastball right at the knees for a call strike. Two and one the count. One to nothing the score, favor the Cardinals. First half, the sixth inning. Chandler working fast pitches. White takes the ball low outside. Ball three. Three and one. Again, Cressetti moves over from third, talking to Chandler. Encouraging his pitcher. Outfield playing Ernie White. Just a step or so toward right field. Chandler throws. White takes this one, and it's in there. Call strike. Makes it three and two. Full count. So just as White ran the count out on Chandler, Chandler runs it out on White. And the payoff pitch. Swung on. There's a bounder out to short. Cressetti goes over, but Rizzuto in back of him takes it, throws to Pretty in time for the out. Rizzuto's been very busy at the field. Threw out the side in the second inning. Musial, Cooper, and Hop. Tossed Hop out again in the fifth, and White just now. All told, Phil has had seven chances. Coming up now is the Cardinal leadoff man, Jimmy Brown. Batting left-handed, the first pitch is swung on, fouled off to the right of the plate, strike one. Brown, the switch hitter, he bats left-handed against right-handed pitching. And since the Yankees have presented nothing but right-handed pitchers, Brown, during the series thus far, has always batted left-handed. Brown bounced out to Chandler himself in the first inning and then grounded out to Joe Gordon in the third. Jimmy's had one hit in the series thus far in nine times at bat. Chandler taking his time, looks in, has the sign from Dickey. Into the windup, in comes the pitch to Jimmy. Brown takes a fastball high outside. Ball one. One and one the count. Outfield playing Jimmy Brown just about straight away. In other words, guarding all sectors of the outfield equally. The one-one pitch. Over that outside corner. Sharp hook. Call strike two. One ball, two strikes on Brown. Frank Rossetti's at third. Phil Rizzuto at short. Joe Gordon on second. Jerry Pretty at first. Chandler pitches. Brown takes the fastball outside for ball two. Two to the count now. Pretty open the game at third base. Buddy Hassett at first. Hassett injured his uh, thumb on his left hand while up at the plate attempting to bunt a ball. The ball hit the bat and the thumb at the same time, so he had to retire. Pretty shifted to first. Presetti went in at third. Chandler throws. Brown swings. Smacks one on the ground out to second. Gordon boots it. Picks the ball up quickly. Throws to Pretty in time for the out. So they're two away. Ball took a little short hop as it reached Gordon. He booted it. The ball dropped in front of him so that he had time to pick it up and make his throw over to Jeremy Pretty to retire Jimmy Brown for the second out. Coming up now, the Cardinal captain, center fielder Terry Moore, who in his two appearances at the plate thus far has taken third call strike on each occasion. Bats him right-handed. First pitch to him. Pitch is swung on as a drive to deep center. Joe DiMaggio trots back easily, gracefully waiting for the ball, makes the catch for the out. And that's all for the Cardinals in the first half of the sixth. Out in order, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. Score remains one to nothing. And that ends the first half of the sixth inning. Men who like brushless shaving cream get a mighty pleasant surprise when they try Gillette Brushless. And no wonder. This cream containing peanut oil makes shaving a lot quicker and easier. What's more, Gillette Brushless is absolutely greaseless. Can't clog razor or drains and it rinses off in a flash. So if you're a brushless fan, it's a sure thing you'll prefer Gillette Brushless. Ask your dealer for a tube. Only 25 cents. Coming into the last half of the sixth inning, it'll be the top of the batting order for the Yankees. Phil Rizzuto, Frank Crosetti, and Roy Cullenbein. 
So far, the Yankees have been unable to get more than three hits off Ernie White, a bunt which Rizzuto beat out in the first inning. Solid base hit by Bill Dickey to right center in the second. Another ringing single by Joe DiMaggio in the fourth. DiMaggio and Dickey, incidentally, are leading both clubs in total number of hits on the series thus far with five each. Up until uh, today's game, the Yankees had reached Cardinal pitches for 21 hits. St. Louis had obtained 13 off Yankee pitching. Here's Phil Rizzuto leading off. Last half of the sixth inning, Cardinals out in front one to nothing. Yankee fans are beginning to bestir themselves a bit. Bill bats him right-handed. Ernie White into the windup. Overhand fastball, low inside, ball one. Whitey Kurowski at third comes racing in on each pitch with Rizzuto up there in position to take a bunch and Phil try to lay one down. Phil did lay one down and beat it out in the first inning. One of the greatest bunters in the major leagues today. White looks around his outfield, which is playing Rizzuto a little bit toward left. Starts into his windup. The next pitch to Phil is right through there for a call strike. George Barr calling balls and strikes. He yelled it out. We could hear him way up here. One and one the count on Rizzuto. White ready. Here's his pitch. It's a curve low inside. Ball two almost got that inside corner as it swept in toward Rizzuto. Phil Rizzuto at the plate. Frank Rossetti on deck, which is an interesting story in itself. You might say pupil and master, or the pupil having taken the master's place. Phil always admired Frank Rossetti greatly before he ever became a member of the Yankees. The next pitch to Rizzuto is high, ball three. Rossetti was one of Phil's boyhood heroes, you might say. And when the time came for him to replace Crescetti, he said he just couldn't believe it. Green won the count on Phil. Ernie White ready. Here's the pitch. And it's in there for call strike two. Better high pitch. So the counts run out on Phil. Three and two. Last half of the sixth inning, Cardinals out in front, one to nothing. And as the game progresses along towards its end, Every pitch means a lot. Here it is. Rizzuto swings, pops it high in the air. Foul off the left of the plate. Walker Cooper under it near the Yankee dugout. Makes the catch for the out. One away for the Yankees. Last half of the sixth inning. And here's Frank Crisetti. Struck out in the third. And he's only appearance at the plate. Buddy Hassett, whose place Crisetti took in the batting order, fouled out to Walker Cooper in the first inning. Hassett had to retire because of an injured thumb. Pretty, who was on third, shifted to first. Crisetti went in to take Pretty's place at third. Frank chokes that bat about two inches or more. Tough man to pitch to, crowds that dish. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. He cut hard. Ernie White's got a lot on that ball. Only won seven games and lost five for the Cardinals this year, but he won five of his seven in their great stretch drive. He's ready for the next offering to uh, Crisetti. And it's over that inside corner for call strike two. And so Ernie White stands ahead of Frankie Cusetti. No balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Last half of the sixth inning, Cardinals ahead, one to nothing. Roy Cullenbine's on deck. Cardinal infield is sort of pulled around over toward third. Kurowski guarding that third baseline. Ernie White ready, throws, Cusetti swings and fouls it back onto the screen. He's up there slashing away. Steps out of the batter's box now to regain his composure a bit. Walker Cooper takes his mitt off, goes down on his haunches, puts his mitt back on, ready to give the sign to Ernie White as soon as Ernie's ready. Cardinal left-hander went to the rosin bag. Now he's back up on the rubber. Cardinal pitchers have to take their signs off the rubber, playing in an American League ballpark. Here's the pitch. Crosetti swings and smacks one across the top and out the second. Jimmy Brown up with it, throws over to Johnny Hopp, and Crosetti is out at first. So they're two away for the Yankees in the last half of the sixth inning. Two up and two down. And here's Roy Cullenbine. He took the third call strike in the first inning and then fouled out to Johnny Hopp in the fourth. Cullenbine's a switch hitter. He's batting right-handed against left-handed pitching. Outfield plays him toward left. Krowski, deep third, guarding the third baseline. Marty Marion, normal short. Jimmy Brown, a deep second, in position to move in back of the bag. Here's the first pitch to Cullenbine. Fastball under the arms, inside, ball one. 
Johnny Hoff is playing a very deep first and over toward the first base line, so the big hole in the infield would be between first and second. Ernie White continuously goes back to that rosin bag, kicking the dirt in front of the rubber. Fidgets around the mound quite a lot. He's all set. Into the windup. Whips the left arm around. The pitch is swung on as a line drive out in the center field, and it's in there for a base hit. Terry Moore waiting for the ball. Takes it on two hops, throws into second. Tellenbein holds it first with a single to center. And that brings up Joe DiMaggio. That was Roy Cullenbein's third hit in the series. Two outs, Cullenbein on it first, and here's Joe DiMaggio, who struck out in the first inning, single left in the fourth. Tying run is on at first base. There are two outs, outfield deep toward left for DiMaggio. Johnny Hopp is on at first base with Cullen Bine. Ernie White takes the stretch, checks the runner. Pitches to DeMadge, who moves away from a fast breaking curve inside. Ball one. Karowski, a very deep third. Not more than three feet away from that foul line. DeMadge can pull him inside the line. Marty Marin and Shorts playing over toward third. Third baseman shortstop, in other words, playing very close together. Shortening the hole for DeMadge to hit through. Hits a lot on that side of the infield. White ready, stretches, pitches. Demage swings and drives one in deep left center. Musial going way back for it, racing. And he, Terry Moore makes the catch in front of him as Dan Musial falls down. A great catch by Terry Moore. And Terry Moore has pulled one of the finest defensive gems of the World Series. Joe DiMaggio drove one into deep left center. Stan Musial racing hard toward the flagpole. Was all set to attempt the catch when suddenly, like a flash of lightning, Terry Moore raced right in front of him and grabbed it. And just at the same time, Stan Musial was falling down. And so it was a brilliant catch by Terry Moore and stopped the Yankee threat in the last half of the sixth. No runs, one hit. No cardinal errors, one left on for the Yankees in the score at the end of six innings, still one nothing in favor of St. Louis, and that ends the sixth inning. Here's how you can help keep our fighting men supplied with war equipment. Collect your old junk. Scrap metal, rubber, rags, manila rope, burlap. Your discarded junk makes bombs, ships, and planes. Round up your junk right now. Sell it to your junk dealer. Give it to a local charity or take it to wherever you see the official salvage depot sign. Throw your scrap into the fight. Getting set now for the seventh inning, and the fans are still buzzing in the background over that sensational catch made by Terry Moore. As we get ready for the first half of the seventh inning, it's Enos Slaughter leading off of the Cardinals. Spud Chandler in the windup throws. The pitch is swung on and missed, strike one. Stan Musil is on deck, then will come Walker Cooper. Slaughter struck out in the first inning. Grounded out unassisted to Jerry Pretty in the fourth. General sent to the next pitch to Slaughter. Here it is. The left-handed hitter swings and hits a looping fly ball foul over near the field boxes. Barry Crusetti's over and makes a nice catch while driving or diving into the field boxes to the left of the Yankee dugout. One away for the Cardinals. Run those looping fouls back of third. Crusetti raced over to the field box. It leaned slightly in, made the catch, and his momentum carried him halfway on into the field box. One down. Stan Musial, the next batter. Chandler throws the ball into Dickey. Empire George Barr looks at it and lets it stay in the ball game. Cardinals one run, two hits. One error, one left on through the first six innings. The Yankees no runs, four hits, no errors, and four left on through the first six innings. Musial grounded out to Rizzuto on the second. Next pitch to him is low, ball one. Musial single to center in the fourth innings. Had one out of two. Ball one. Chandler all set. Here's his pitch. Musial swing sends a hard bounder down to Pretty, who lets the ball bounce off his chest, picks it up, flips to Chandler just in time for the out. There's a hard smash down toward first. The ball hopped up and bounced off Freddy's chest, but he recovered in time to throw to Chandler. And Musil is out. 
Got to act fast with these Cardinals. Bunch of jackrabbits. They really can run. Remember, folks, Bill Corn will bring you his very interesting summary with highlights of today's game immediately at the finish of the game. So stay with us. We know you're going to enjoy it. Here's Walker Cooper up. Chandler's first pitch to the Cardinal catcher. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Swung so hard, lost his balance a bit and sat down. Two away. This has been a game of great pitching thus far. Chandler ready for the next one to Cooper. That swung on to drive out in the left field. Keller's there waiting, and he takes it for the out. So the Cardinals go out very quickly in their half of the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. Coming into the last half of the seventh, all Yankee fans stand up and hear a roar coming over the vast enclosure of Yankee Stadium. You know, when Gillette engineers designed the sharpness comparator, they took the guesswork right out of razor blade manufacturing. This instrument actually measures sharpness with a beam of light. It enables technicians to adjust the stropping wheels with utmost precision and ensure edges of incomparable keenness. Therefore, you get shaving comfort and economy that positively cannot be matched. Coming into the last half of the seventh inning, Joe Gordon, Charlie Keller, and Bill Dickey will be coming up to face the slants of left-hander Ernie White. Walker Cooper, who just made the last out, is adjusting his catching paraphernalia, and so Ken O'Day, Cardinals' second-string catcher, is out there warming up Ernie White. O'Day, incidentally, is no stranger to World Series competition, having uh, competed in the World Series with the Giants when he was a member of the Giants a few years back, and he had the pleasure of hitting a home run in a World Series. The other day, he came up in a pinch hitting roll out in St. Louis and got himself a base hit. Ken is a New York State boy. A lot of his friends down from his hometown to watch him in action if he gets in, at least to watch his teammates play anyway. Cardinals are leading one to nothing in this third game of the 1942 World Series, which up until today stood even. One win apiece. Joe Gordon leading off, struck out in the second inning, which incidentally was the sixth time that he struck out in the series. He flied to Stan Musial in the fourth. Ernie White into the windup. Here's the first pitch to Gordon. Swung on. There's a drive deep in the left field. Musial's backing up for it. He's getting under it, though, near the wall. Backing, backing, and makes the catch at the edge of the barrier for the out. Another two or three feet, and it would have been in. Musial backed up against the wall about 10 feet to the left of the 402-foot sign and took Joe Gordon's towering drive for out number one. That gave the fans quite a thrill one of the hardest pokes of the game thus far, one of the deepest at any rate, the longest. Little activity in the Cardinal bullpen. All we can see is the man catching. We can't see the pitcher, so we can't tell you who's warming up. The bullpen is in between the right center field bleachers and the left uh, right uh, center field grandstand. Here's Charlie Keller up. First pitch to him is a curve, but low, ball one. Keller grounded out to hop in the second inning to slaughter in the fourth. One down, nobody aboard. Keller the batter, Dickey on deck. Ernie White checking his sign to walk Cooper. Outfield deep toward right for Keller. White swoops down low into his windup. Overhand fastball up high, ball two. Two nothing to count on Charlie. Art Fletcher coaching back to third. Encouraging the hitters, he hollers up to the plate. Earl Combs is coaching back to first. Keller stands just a little bit ahead of White right now. Two balls, no strikes. One out, nobody on. Last half of the seventh, Cardinals ahead, one nothing. Here's White's pitch. Keller swings and sends a bounder down the first baseline. It's foul, says Big Cal Hubbard. And so it's two balls, one strike on Charlie Keller. Cardinals whip the ball around the infield. Ernie White was racing over to first to be in position to take a throw from Hop if that was necessary had the ball been fair. And he has to walk back to the hill. Steps on. Keller just out of the batter's box, adjusting his cap. Now he steps in. Keller entertained the fans before game time by driving a few long ones into the stands. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swung on. There's a drive going deep out in the right field. Slaughter backing up for it. The ball is caught with a sensational one-handed catch. Ela 
Slaughter just robbed Charlie Keller of a home run as he went back to the barrier in deep right field and made a glove-handed stab of Charlie Keller's vicious drive. There's a very low barrier, only about three or four feet high. And Ina Slaughter, as you can hear the crowd rumbling in the background, the cheers that followed that superb catch, robbed Charlie Keller of a round tripper. And so that's two sterling defensive plays that the Cardinals have come up with in the last two innings. Terry Moore on Joe DiMaggio's drive in the sixth inning and Ina Slaughter on Keller's. And here's Bill Dickey up and the first pitch is low outside for ball one. Bill Dickey single to right center in the second inning grounded out to Jimmy Brown in the fifth. What a ball game this is. Terrific. Ernie White ready throws. Dickey swings, sends a bounder out to short. Marion goes in back to the bag, picks it up, throws to hop in time for the out. Listen to the hand for Ina Slaughter as he comes in to the Cardinal dugout. And that ends the seventh inning. You know, there's no guesswork about the proper tempering of Gillette steel. That's handled by automatic electric furnaces of Gillette's own design. Furthermore, samples from every coil of steel are submitted to the Vickers Hardness Tester. There are only a few of these costly instruments in the whole country, including one at the Bureau of Standards at Washington. Getting ready for the first half of the eighth inning. In this most closely contested of all the World Series games thus far, thus far and one of the most brilliantly played defensively, especially by that Cardinal outfield thus far. Here is Johnny Hop leading off. He swings the first pitch, sends one-on-one -on -one Hop out to Gordon. Gordon throws over to Pretty, and Hop is out at first. Hop having grounded out on his two previous appearances to Phil Rizzuto in the second and fifth innings. Coming up now is Whitey Kurowski, whose walk led to the Cardinals' run in the third inning, and who scored it himself. Popped out to Phil Rizzuto in the fifth inning. Bats him right-handed. Drives a long ball. Chandler's first pitch to him. Sweeping curve broke right over that inside corner. Belt high for a called strike. One to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. First half of the eighth. Chandler ready. Throws. It's another curve, a little bit high. Ball one. One and one the count. Corsetti at third, Rizzuto at short, Gordon at second. Pretty on first. Yankee infield. Dickey catching, Chandler pitching. Keller on left, Imagio in center. Cullen Bine in right. Outfield over toward left for Kurowski. Chandler ready. Pitches. This one backs Kurowski away from the plate. Fastball inside. Ball two. Two and one. Billy Southworth, Cardinal manager. Billy the Kid coaching back of third. Mike Gonzalez, he of good field, no hit fame, coaching back of first. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Kurowski. It's high. Ball three. Three and one. George Barr dusts off the plate. Chandler turns his back to the plate, looking around the outfield, kicking the dirt and around the rubber. Frank Cressetti comes over from third, shouting words of encouragement to Georgia Boy. Now he goes back to his third base position. Chandler getting set for his 3-1 pitch to Kurowski. Kurowski digs in, set. Here it is. It's over there for a call strike two. Fastball, three and two the count now. String is run out on the Cardinal third baseman. Marty Marion is on deck. Crowd at the moment, settled back, quiet, easing up a little bit after having yelled as much as they could at Slaughter's great catch before. The next pitch is swung on, hit to pass Corsetti as the ball took a bad hop and shot past him out of the left field, holding it first as Kurowski as Keller fields the ball, quickly throws into second. There was a smash on the ground to Corsetti's left. He went over to field it. And at the last second, the ball, instead of hopping up, laid low and skipped past him. And it scored as a base hit for Whitey Kurowski. A single to left. Stepping in now is lanky Marty Marion, Cardinal shortstop, who had an infield hit in the third inning and grounded out to Corsetti in the fifth. Spurgeon Chandler takes a stretch, checks Kowalski leading off first. Here's the pitch to Marion. Outside, ball one. That hit was Kowalski's second of the series. Outfield playing Marion straight away. All sectors of the field equally being covered. One out. Kurowski on it first. There's a quick throw over to first, but Kurowski's back safe. He hit the dirt coming back in. Chandler sort of fell away from the mound. He threw that ball over. Pretty on the bag. 
with Karowski. Yankee infield. Short and second in a couple of steps each. Time call as Marion steps out of the batter's box. Now we're all set to resume action. Here's the pitch. Marion takes another one outside. Ball two. Curve ball broke too quickly. Now we have a little activity in the Yankee bullpen. Looks a little bit uh, like Jim Turner. Just can see a bit of the back. Here's the pitch to Marion. It's low outside. Ball three. Both bullpens are almost hidden from view. So it's difficult to see. Three nothing to count on Marion. Chandler taking his time right now. Remember to listen to Bill Corum's comments on the sensational feeling gems made by ends by uh, Ena Slaughter and Terry Moore immediately at the end of our play by play description. So stay tuned with it. Now we're all set for the three nothing pitch to Marion. Karowski leading off first. Here it is. And it's through there for a called strike. Three and one. Three and one the count. Here it is. Pitch is swung on. It's a slow hopper out towards short. Rizzuto takes it quickly. Throws to Gordon. Gordon over to Pretty. Not in time at first, but out at second is Whitey Kurowski. As Marion forced him, Rizzuto, to Gordon. Gordon pivoted, relayed over to Pretty, but not in time to nip Marion, who wasted no time getting down to first base. We're waiting for Ernie White to come up, and here he comes out of the Cardinal dugout to the cheers and applause of the fans. Allowed but four scattered hits. Has blanked the Yankees through seven innings. Throws left-handed, but he bats him right-handed. There are two outs now. Marion's on at first base. Chandler takes his stretch. Here's his pitch to White. It swung on and fouled off into the stands over the Cardinal dugout. A little scramble for the ball, as always. Fans have a lot of fun going after those. Chandler is standing back the hill, looking out in center field, and motions into the plate that he wants another ball. So he throws it into Dickey. George Bart takes a new one out of his pocket, gives it to Bill, and Bill throws it out to Spurgeon. As most of you people probably know, at St. Louis, they use the National League Baseball. And here at the Yankee Stadium, with the home team being the American League team, they're using the American League ball. Which, to all intents and purposes, is just about the same Although Red Ruffing was telling me that the National League ball felt a little uh, bigger to him because the seams are raised a little higher. Chandler's in no hurry. He's taking his time. Taking too much time for Ernie White who steps out of the batter's box. Time is called. Now White steps back in. Marion leads off first. Stretched by Chandler the pitch to White. White starts to cut but changes his mind. The pitch goes outside. The ball one. One and one the count. Activity in both bullpens. Chandler again takes a stretch. Here's the pitch. White swings and hits a high pop-up. Back to the plate. Dickey coming back toward the screen. Still coming. Has his eye on the ball. And he makes the catch for the out. White fouls out to Dickey. So that's all for the Cardinals in the first half of the eighth inning. No runs. One hit. No Yankee errors. One man left on base for St. Louis. The score, one to nothing. Favor the Cardinals at the end of seven and one half innings. That ends the first half of the eighth inning. For the special benefit of listeners who tuned in late, here's a way to get easier shaves. Probably a lot of you men have already guessed what I'm going to say because I'm thinking of Gillette shaving cream, lather or brushless. Now, I happen to go all out for brushless, so I want to tell you about that. This cream contains peanut oil. It's free from grease, has a pleasant, refreshing scent, and rinses off instantly. Consequently, it can't clog razor or drains. Best of all, Gillette Brushless holds plenty of moisture, does a real job of beard softening. And you know, it's really the water that prepares your whiskers for the razor. Now, it's easy to prove everything I've said. Get a tube of Gillette Brushless shaving cream. It costs nothing extra, 25 cents, or 33 cents for the giant size economy tube. We're all set now for the last half of the eighth inning. As this tremendously exciting, 
And hotly contested game moves right down toward its finish. Last half of the eighth, Jerry Pretty leading off the Yankees. Chandler's the next scheduled hitter. Then Phil Rizzuto. Whether or not Chandler will bat remains to be seen. Left-hander Ernie White goes into his windup. Here's the pitch to Jerry Pretty. Jerry swings and hits a high pop-up out toward second base. Jimmy Brown calls for it. Under it, waiting, still waiting, and makes the catch for the out. So there's one away. Jerry Pretty pops to Jimmy Brown on the first pitch. And Red Ruffing's going to come out to bat for Spurgeon Chandler. Charlie Ruffing is going to come out and do some pinch hitting. It'll be his second appearance as a pinch hitter in the series. After having pitched the opening game of the World Series, he came back in the second game in the role of a pinch hitter. Here's the announcement coming over the loudspeaker. This uh, makes the second time that Ruffing has come in as pinch hitter. His third appearance, in other words, in the series. This being the third game, Ruffing is the only pitcher, we might say, that has made an appearance in each one, although he's only made one appearance as a pitcher, the other two as pinch hitters. Ruffing uh, had one hit and five times at bat in the first two games. Here's the first pitch to him. Sharp curve breaks right through there for a call strike. Outfield plays Ruffing a little bit toward right and center and right. Not too much so in left. Here's White's pitch. Ruffing takes and it's low. Ball one. One and one the count. Ernie White rubbing up cover the ball. Every pitch carries a lot of extra responsibility right now. Here's the one-one pitch to Ruffing. And it's over that outside corner for call strike two. Ruffing steps out of the batter's box for a moment to remonstrate a bit with umpire George Barr. Now he moves back into batting position. One ball, two strikes. Ruffing batting for Chandler. Cardinal left-hander working easily, smoothly, confidently. Sweeps down low into the windup. Here's his pitch. Ruffing swings and he misses. Strike three. And that's Arnie White's sixth strikeout. And that makes the 18th Yankee to have gone down by way of strikeouts in the series. 14 Cardinals have struck out in the series. White struck out six. Chandler struck out three in this particular game. Here's Phil Rizzuto up. Two outs, nobody on. First pitch to Phil is swung on. It's a pop-up foul. Back to third. Karowski racing over near the field boxes, trying to get under it. Leans into the boxes, but can't get it. As the ball drops into the runway between the field boxes and the first row of reserve seats right behind them. Made a nice effort. One strike on Rizzuto. Phil beat out a bunt in the first inning for a hit. Lined to Karowski in the third and fouled out to Walker Cooper in the sixth. Two outs, nobody on. Last half of the eighth inning, Cardinals clinging to that one-run lead, which they established in the third inning. White ready. Here's the pitch to Rizzuto. It swung on to line drive over. Marys head out into left center field for a base hit. Terry Moore quickly races over in front of Musil, feels the ball on the roll, throws into second, and Rizzuto holds on it first with a line single to left center. That Terry Moore really covers ground. Coming up is Frankie Crosetti. Crosetti has only been at bat twice. He didn't come into the ball game until the second inning. Struck out in the third, grounded out to Jimmy Brown at second base in the sixth. That's him right-handed. That's the Yankees' fifth hit off Ernie White. There have been eight hits in the ball game all told, three for St. Louis. We'll have a new pitcher for the Yankees going into the ninth inning with Chandler having been removed for a pinch hitter. White takes a stretch, checks Rizzuto. Here's the pitch to uh, Crisetti, and it's in there for a call strike. Frank definitely crowds that plate. Doesn't give the pitcher too much room to throw that ball through. Chokes that bat a couple of inches. Tying runs on it, first base, two outs. Hop on the bag with Rizzuto. White takes a stretch, checks Phil. There goes Rizzuto, the pitch is swung on to roller down toward third. Karowski's up with it. There's his throw over to Hop, in time for the out. And so Ernie White once again gets by the Yankees without permitting a score. No run. One hit. No cardinal errors. And one man left on base with the end of eight innings. 
One to nothing. St. Louis, the Cardinals, one run, three hits, one error. Two left on, the Yankees, no runs. Five hits, no errors. And five men left on base. This third game of the 1942 World Series is coming to you direct from the Yankee Stadium in New York. And now we're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. As we come into the first half of the ninth inning, the new pitcher for the Yankees will be Marvin Brewer, a curveball specialist. Spurgeon Chandler removed for a pinch hitter in the last half of the eighth inning, thus worked eight innings, allowed but three hits, walked only one, and struck out three while giving up one run. So as the situation now stands, it's Chandler's ball game to lose. He lost the uh, only game the Yankees lost in the 1941 World Series. Marvin Brewer's come in to relieve him. Brewers won eight games and lost nine on the regular season. Lost a lot of tough ball games. Pitches a very good curveball, one of the finest in the major leagues. He's a right-hand pitcher from Rollo, Missouri, incidentally, which is closer to the Cardinals' home ballpark, Sportsman's Park, than it would be to the Yankee Stadium. Then hometowns don't always dictate the place where a ball player is going to play his baseball. As we go into the ninth inning, for the Cardinals, it'll be the top of their batting order. Jimmy Brown, Terry Moore, and Enos Slaughter. For those of you who might have tuned in late, wondering how the Cardinals got their one run, which is the only run in the game, in the third inning, Kurowski walked, went to second as Marion top pitched down toward third and beat it out for a hit. White sacrificed Kurowski to third, Marion to second, and while Brown was grounding out to Gordon, Kurowski came home from third. And that's the only run of the game thus far. So we're all set now for the first half of the ninth inning. Jimmy Brown up, Marvin Brewer, right-hander throws. It's a curve, swung on, lined over Gordon's head out in the right center for a base hit. Joe DiMaggio races over, fields it on the roll, throws quickly in the second, and Brown holds it first after taking his turn with a single to right center. Coming up is Terry Moore. That's the Cardinals' fourth hit. Jimmy Brown seems, didn't take a hard cut at that ball. He just seemed to lift it. He seemed to lift it right over Gordon's head. Terry Moore up. Yankees watching for the bunt stretch by Brewer. In comes the pitch. Moore shortens up. It doesn't bunt as the pitch goes high for ball one. Moore took a third call strike in the first inning. Again in the third. Fly to DiMaggio in the sixth. Frank Rossetti in close on the grass at third. Pretty on the bag at first. With Jimmy Brown. Stretch by Brewer. Checks his runner. Here's the pitch. Moore shortens up. Bunts but fouls it off to the right of the plate. Way back. Strike one. One and one the count. Marius Russo. The left-hander is throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees. We can just see the top of his head and his arms. It slings around. Someone else warming long just to his left. We can see the arm go up occasionally, but that's all we can see of that particular pitcher. First half of the ninth. Cardinals ahead. one nothing. Nobody out. Jimmy Brown on it. First base. That was Brown's second hit of the series. Brewer takes his stretch. Checks his runner. Then pitches more. Shortens up. Bunts out in front of the plate. Brewer quickly picks it up. His throw is to second base to Rizzuto. In time for that. And then the decision is changed. And safe at second is Jimmy Brown. As George Majorcutt, after having called him out, quickly changed and went down with the hands. And all hands are safe. Big argument going on. Rizzuto, pretty. Keller comes in from left field. Cullenbein from right. And they're all following Major Kurth as he walks out toward right center field. Rizzuto, pretty. Keller, Gordon, Cullenbein are all arguing with George Major Kurth. And the argument is taking place in short right center field. Frank Presetti walks over from third base. He's walking out toward the center of the argument. Now Keller leaves. He's going back out in the left field, and George Majorkurth stands with his back to everybody looking out toward the right center field bleachers. Freddie, Cullen Vine, Gordon, Rizzuto, and Presetti are all surrounding George, arguing with him. And now Bill Summers, American League umpire over at third, starts walking out in that direction see if he can do something about 
getting the boys to come back and play ball. The official scorer has scored the play this way. He has not given Terry Moore credit for sacrifice, but has charged Marvin Brewer with an error, a wild throw. The throw was a little wide of the bag. Pulled Rizzuto off. So apparently, Major Kurth's decision was based on this fact, that though the ball may have arrived ahead of the runner, Jimmy Brown, the throw being wild, pulled Rizzuto's foot off the bag, and therefore Brown was safe. So it's an error for Marvin Brewer. All hands are safe. Brown's on second. Moore on at first base, not credited with the sacrifice. And coming up to the plate is Enos Slaughter. Bats him left-handed. Nobody out here in the first half of the ninth inning. Runners lead off. The pitch is outside. Ball one. Slaughter shortened up as if he's going to try a bunt. Frank Rossetti's in close at third to watch for a bunt. Jimmy Brown leads off second. Terry Moore off first. Nobody out. First half of the ninth. Cardinals lead one to nothing. Brewer takes his stretch, checks his runners' pitches. And the pitch is bunted foul off the right of the plate for, uh, by Slaughter for strike one. One and one the count. Marvin Brewer's in trouble here in the ninth inning, having come in to take the place of Spurgeon Chandler, who permitted the Cardinals with three hits over the first eight innings, was removed for a pinch hit in the last half of the eighth. One and one the count on Slaughter. On deck is Stan Musial. Jimmy Brown leads off second. Terry Moore off first. Brewer takes his stretch. Here's the pitch. It swung on and fouled back by Slaughter for strike two. Billy Southworth changed up, called off the bunt, and ordered Slaughter to swing away. One ball, two strikes on the Cardinal right fielder. What a superb catch he made. Bill Corum, whose highly interesting summary will come on immediately at the end of this game, will have a lot to say about it, we're sure. Brewer looks around the outfield. Now he's ready, looks in, gets the sign from Dickey. There's Brown leading off second again. Terry Moore off first. In comes the pitch to Slaughter. He swings on it. There's a smash pass to Rizzuto out to center field for a base hit. Brown rounds third on his way to score. DiMaggio throws into third as Terry Moore goes in, and he's safe at third. And into second on the throw to third went Ina Slaughter. And Corsetti pushes Bill Summers, the umpire, and Bill Summers pushes Corsetti back. And there goes Joe McCarthy out to join in the argument. And Joe Gordon comes over from second. And the argument rages at third base. And there's Corsetti taking off his glove, and Art Fletcher comes racing out from the Yankee dugout. And Bill Summers is walking away from Corsetti and Fletcher and McCarthy and Gordon. And there is Fletcher and Corsetti gesticulating wildly as they argue with Bill Summers. And Joe McCarthy is right out there spearheading the attack as he moves in between Summers and Fletcher, each, each one of the four trying to move in front of the other to talk to Summers. And Frank Corsetti, as the decision was made at third, Slammed the ball down hard on the ground and then quickly picked it up, realizing the time had not been called. We couldn't tell you about it at that moment because play was still going on. Slaughter was going into second on the throw to third and in from third, from second on the hit came Jimmy Brown, the Cardinals lead, 2-0. Meantime, Bill Summers walking along the left field line and Corsetti still after him and Art Fletcher pulls Frankie away. And he and Joe McCarthy are still going after Bill Summers, arguing with him. Joe DiMaggio has come over from center field, standing just on the fringe of the circle with Summers, McCarthy, and Fletcher. Ward DiMaggio and Rizzuto and Gordon and Pretty, but now the argument is all over. The runners return to position, or rather the players return to their positions. Joe McCarthy walking back toward the Yankee dugout, stops for a moment as Billy Southworth in the meantime is chatting with Terry Moore, who's on to third base. On at second base is Enos Slaughter. Nobody out here in the ninth inning. Cardinals are leading two to nothing. And so Ina Slaughter, single to center, scoring Brown from second, is credited with a run batted in. That for Slaughter is his third hit of the series. And his first run batted in. Jerry Pretty is just now getting back over to first base. Meantime, Joe Gordon, Joe Gordon is still arguing with George Majorkirth at second base, and we're waiting for them. They're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and talking it out. And now uh, Gordon has finished arguing with Major Kurth. Goes back to his position. Cullen Bynes trots out into right field, and we'll be ready to continue play here in the ninth inning. 
And at this point, Art Fletcher comes out of the Yankee dugout. That possibly may be all for Marvin Brewer. I think that'll be all for Marvin Brewer. The uh, official scorer, as we've already indicated to you, has given Slaughter a single. He went to second on the throw to third. So Fletch comes out to talk to Bill Dickey. Pat O'Doherty, the Yankee bat boy, dashed out along the left field line to holler to Charlie Keller for Keller in turn to holler to the Yankee bullpen for a new pitcher. And that is going to be all for Brewer. He comes off the mound, standing talking to Dickey between home plate and third base. George Levy, the fellow here at the stadium, goes out to uh, ask George Barr just uh, what the change is going to be. He, in turn, will carry the message over to the public address announcer. Still waiting for the new Yankee pitcher to make his appearance so we can tell you who it is. Charlie Keller has gone out to the little barrier in front of the runway, which leads into the bullpen here at the stadium, calling for the proper pitcher, and here he comes. Jim Turner, I believe, or Johnny Murphy is so far away, we'll have to wait till they get a little bit closer. Situation here in the ninth inning, though, is one run in for St. Louis. They lead 2 nothing. Here's the announcement of the new pitcher. Turner. It is Jim Turner. Number 30. Now pitching for New York. It is Jim Turner coming in to make his debut in this current World Series, but not his first World Series. You remember he was with the Cincinnati Redlegs in the 1940 World Series, started a game against the Detroit Tigers. Jim Turner, the milkman, who along with Lou Fetty, you'll remember years ago with the Boston Braves, started the baseball world when these two veteran rookies each won uh, 20 games for the Boston Braves. So here's Jim Turner coming in to take over in the ninth inning. Marvin Brewer, who started the ninth inning after Chandler had been removed for a pinch hitter, thus has not pitched any part of an inning, there being nobody out. However, during the time he was on the mound, he allowed two hits. Didn't walk anybody, no strikeouts. And at the moment, has allowed one run. One run has been scored while he was on the mound. And so we're going to have another little wait here while Jim Turner loosens up. In the meantime, we have on third base Terry Moore, who went from first to third on Slaughter's single, which scored Brown from second. Slaughter himself took second on the throw to third, which stirred up all the argument. Frank Presetti, of course, claiming that he had Terry Moore out. Umpire Bill Summers of the American League who called to the play said no, and then the argument raged. Now, don't forget, folks, while we have a moment here, tomorrow we take the air a half hour later than today. So make a note now to be with us at 1.45 Eastern War Time. Remember, 1.45 Eastern War Time tomorrow afternoon for the fourth game of this 1942 World Series, which promises to go down in history as one of the greatest of all time. Certainly the way the games have gone thus far have been fireworks galore. Stan Musial will be the first man to face Jim Turner. Jim is what you might call a spot pitcher, a good control pitcher. He has a peculiar knack of raising that left knee of his high almost up to his midsection before throwing the ball. And to a batter, it often looks as if that pitch is coming off of Jim's knee, right in behind it. And with men on second and third, nobody out, Stan Musial is to get an intentional pass. There's the first wide one. With a left-handed hitter up there, they're going to uh, walk Musial to load the bases, first base being open, setting up uh, possible plays at any base. There's the second wideman, Turner getting set to the third wideman to Musial. There it is. To those every keeping score, put down base on balls for Stan Musial, an intentional pass. And the fourth wideman. That loads him up. Musial's on it first. He's walking down. Slaughter's on it second. Terry Moore on it third. And the batter is Walker Cooper. Billy Southworth comes up the line from third base to talk to his catcher. Whispers something in his ear, and then Billy the Kid trots back down to his third base coaching box. And Walker Cooper steps into hitting position. So the Cardinals are leading two to nothing. It's the ninth inning. Nobody out, bases filled. Yankee infield halfway in for a play at the plate. The first pitch to Walker Cooper. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Terry Moore on third. Enos Slaughter on second. Stan Musial on first. Yankee infield. 
Playing in for a play at the plate. Cooper bats him right-handed. Turner starts his windup. In comes the pitch to Cooper. It swung on and fouled off over the Cardinal dugout into the lower stands for strike two. And it's a tense moment here in the ninth inning. Cardinals have a chance to blow the game wide apart. The Yankees trying to stop the threat from going any further if they possibly can. Cardinals leading by 2 nothing at the moment. With three men on and nobody out. Just about one of the toughest spots for any pitcher in the series thus far. Turner hollered something up to Dickey as he started his windup. In comes the pitch. Cooper swings and hits a top fly out in the short center. DiMaggio coming hard, getting under it, makes the catch, and there's no advance. Cooper popped this one out into short center. DiMaggio had to come a long way to get under it. The infield was drawn in, remember. Billy Southworth respecting the magic in Joe's right arm. Refused to let Terry Moore even budge. So the bases remain loaded. One out. And the batter, Johnny Hopp. Cardinal first baseman grounded out to Rizzuto in the second inning. Did the same thing in the fifth. And then grounded out to Joe Gordon in the eighth. Jim Turner wants a new ball. Throws it into Dickey. Barr looks it over. Perhaps uh, Johnny Hopp asks Barr to look it over. George does. And the ball stays in the game. So Johnny Hopp moves into hitting position. Still have Terry Moore on at third. Ana Slaughter on second. Dan Musial on it first. One out. Yankee infield still drawn in. Not entirely in, but about halfway. A little better than half. In position for a play at the plate or to start a possible double play if the opportunity presents itself. Turn in the wind-up pitches. Hop takes the, this one, the slow curve. A little bit high for ball one. Jim pitching carefully, taking his time. Trying not to make any pitch any too good at all. As a sign from Dickey, runners lead off. In comes the pitch. It's swung on. It's a fly ball going out into left center field. Charlie Keller's getting under it. Terry Moore waiting to tag up. There's the catch. Here comes Moore to the plate. In comes the throw. And it is in time for the out. It's a double play. And Terry Moore simply stood at the plate and looked at plate umpire George Barr. Dickey apparently tagged him out on the arm as he came across the plate. And so for the Cardinals in the ninth inning, only one run. Two hits, one Yankee error, and two men left on base. And the milkman, Jim Turner, came in and put out the fire with the bases loaded and nobody out. He got him out without allowing a run. Two to nothing, St. Louis. As we get set for the last half of the ninth inning. Say, folks, you know, presents for men in our armed forces overseas must be mailed immediately to ensure delivery by Christmas. Remember this to avoid disappointment. And remember also that razor blades are at or near the top of every serviceman's list of desired gifts. This third game of the 1942 World Series comes to you direct from the Yankee Stadium in New York. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. In order that your scoring might be complete and official, that run which the Cardinals got in the first half of the ninth inning was not earned. Here's Roy Cullenbine leading off of the Yankees as we come into the last half of the ninth inning with the Cardinals out in front, two to nothing. And Ernie White, who's breezed along, scattering five hits nicely. No more than one in any inning. Steps on the rubber to get a sign from Walker Cooper. Cullenbein single to center in the sixth for one of the Yankees' five hits. White into the windup. Here's the pitch. Cullenbein swings and drives the one into center field. Terry Moore coming hard and fast, and he makes the catch for the out. Thousands of people who are here at the jam-packed Yankee Stadium today, if they didn't know before, know now why Terry Moore is considered one of the game's greatest defensive center fielders. 
He's been superb. And here is the Yankee Clipper. Another great center field. And the first pitch to Joe DiMaggio swung on and fouled back onto the screen. Strike one. It's the last half of the ninth inning. The Cardinals are leading two to nothing. Riding the crest of the momentum they gained in clipping the Yankees in the second game of the World Series in St. Louis. Behind the great pitching of left-hander Ernie White, they've come along here to the ninth inning with one out, leading two nothing. DiMaggio at plate, Joe Gordon on deck. Ernie White still bearing down. And his next pitch to DiMaggio is low outside for ball one. DiMaggio struck out in the first inning, single to left in the fourth. And had Terry Moore make a great catch of a drive of his in the sixth inning. White checking with Walker Cooper, has his sign, leans forward, goes into the windup, whips the left arm around. DiMaggio takes a fast one low inside for ball two. Two and one the count on Joe. Steps out of the batter's box for a moment, gets a little dirt on his hands. Just his cap as he steps back into hitting position. The outfield deep over toward left. White to the Rosenbag to give it a little touch. He's still cool and calm. Working steadily and heavily. Blows on his pitching hand. Leans forward, goes into that windup. DiMaggio's head to the plate. Here's the pitch. It swung on as a drive on the left field for a base hit. Stan Muschel getting in front of the bounder. Picks it up, throws into second. DiMaggio holds on it first with a single to the left. His second hit of the game and his seventh of the series. His sixth of the series. Check that. Coming up now is Joe Gordon. One out. Last half of the ninth inning. Gordon struck out in the second inning. Fly to Musial in the fourth and fly to Musial in the seventh. Gordon bats him right-handed. Yankee fans are beginning to yell. That's a sustained yell, if I might call it that. The Maggio leads off first base. Outfield deep for left for Gordon. The stretch for Ernie White the pitch. Gordon swings and misses. Strike one. And the tension mounts here in the last half of the ninth inning. Ernie White. Bearing down. He's allowed six hits. DiMaggio's belt being the sixth one off of him. Takes his stretch, checks Joe. In comes the pitch to Gordon. Gordon swings and hits a high fly ball out along the foul line. Back to third. Kurowski and Marion are there. Kurowski's under it, and Kurowski makes the catch as Marion, right in behind him, falls down. And DiMaggio scoops back to first, and there are two outs. And here's Charlie Keller. With Ernie White, one out away from victory. Ernie White is taking his time. So is Charlie Keller stepping in. It's the last half of the ninth inning. Two to nothing, Cardinals, two outs. Joe DiMaggio on first base. And Keller is up there. White takes his stretch. Here's the pitch to Keller. Keller swings, and there's the drive. Going, going, going. Going deep. Back under it is Slaughter, and he's right against the wall and makes the catch for the out. And the ball game is over, and the Cardinals win it. Two to nothing. In the last half of the ninth inning for the Yankees, no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on. And the Cardinals move ahead in the series two games to one as they shut out the Yankees two to nothing. And now stepping in, in another moment, will be Bill Corum with his summary of today's game. Well, this gives me a final chance to tell you a simple way to get several extra shaves with every Gillette Blue Blade. And believe me, that's something important to know. Take a look, and you'll see that the Gillette Blue Blade has marks resembling the Roman numerals 1 and 2 on the ends projecting beyond your razor. These identify the edges and enable you to shave one side of your face with one edge, the opposite side with the other, giving both equal use. The effect is much the same as crisscrossing your automobile tires for extra mileage. You get a number of additional shaves, and that saves blades. Try this simple, thrifty way of conserving Gillette Blue Blades. You'll find that it pays a real bonus in extra shaves and comfort, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is brilliant sports columnist, the New York Journal American, a member of Gillette's cavalcade of sports staff, 
a shrewd observer of baseball as well as all other sports, all set to give you his stage observations on this highly exciting and dramatic ball game. Bill Corum. I don't know how sage they'll be, Mel, but this seems to me to have been a ball game that was lost with an argument that was won. The Yankees won an argument in the second inning on a ball at Marion Bunted where he was out at first base sacrificing Kurowski down to second and made him come back to bat. And the second time they tried to make the same play, Marion got a single when the throw just failed to beat him to first and that came the run, in came the run. As a result of that, that gave the Cardinals the victory because the second er run was not earned, and that was all that Ernie White needed to win this ball game. Here's a fellow from a little town down called Pecolette Mills, South Carolina. Uh, about 1,000, 1,500 folks down there. Got a growing youngster of his own, a pitcher too, named Joe Dan, who pitched one of the greatest games that's been seen in the World Series in, oh, I don't know how long, because not since 1926, as some of you know, have these Yankees been shut out in a World Series ball game. They'd gone 42 times before Ernie White stepped in there this afternoon and set them back. And even at that, his pitching was no better than that of his rival Spurgeon Chandler of Moultrie, Georgia, who gave the Cardinals the victorious Cardinals only three hits before he left the game and was just a superb pitcher every step of the way. Now, as I tell you, the last run was not earned because Brewer uh, threw wide to second base in an effort to make a force play, but it really didn't matter because save for DiMaggio, who's hitting beautifully in this series, uh, White had the Yankees right uh, on the arm, right in that big glove of his, and the Cardinals are now surging along with another pitcher just like him to come back tomorrow, very, very much like him. In fact, Max Lanier pitches the same sort of ball and looks a good deal like him, and it looks to me, as I said in the opening talk before the game, that whoever won this game was going to have a big edge. Of course, you can't hold these Yankees forever, and certainly you're not going to shut them out very many times. They proved that by going 42 without anybody shutting them out. But today, White was a master. No greater master than Chandler, I keep repeating, but uh, to the victor belongs the spoils, and he won the ball game. And little Jimmy Brown out there, you could hear him above the hum of the crowd, a silent crowd, incidentally, a tremendously big one, every seat packed in this great three-tiered stadium but a very quiet crowd right down to the finish when the ball game really was played again in that long ninth inning. You could hear little Jimmy Brown call into White, come on, Ernie, come on, boy, with that piping voice of his, and White did come on, whereas Beasley had missed the opportunity for the shutout, and whereas uh, old Grandpa Ruffing had missed his opportunity for a no-hit game, this fella came through. And I want to tell you a little bit about some outfielding. Coming back on the train from St. Louis, some of the boys said, well, I don't know whether that Cardinal outfield can play in the big Yankee Stadium. Well, they made three plays, one after the other, starting with Terry Moore, who went back a musial to take DiMaggio's bid for at least a triple and maybe a home run inside the park over his shoulder, going at full tilt. Then the very next ball in the next inning was driven practically to the left field barrier. Musial went up and pulled it down, and then the next drive, just to make it even all around and show that any one of the boys could do it, was laid up against the right field fence, and there was Enos Country Slaughter to grab that one. If you can play any better center field, incidentally, than Mr. Terry Moore can play, well, then you can have the marbles for me, because I think here are the two greatest fielding center fielders that ever hooked up in any World Series, DiMaggio and Moore. Moore's got a little bad leg right now, but it didn't show this afternoon. He was all over the ballpark to take that first hit in the ninth inning. He came charging in. He can throw just like Damage can throw, and Damage proved it again this afternoon because when a short fly was hit out to him with the bases loaded in the ninth, uh, nobody moved, and quite rightly. Mr. Southworth knew that that was no chance, no time to take a chance. They took it on the next one, and Moore was thrown out at the plate on a very close play. But as it turned out, it didn't matter. And so the ball game wound up 2 to nothing. and the totals as I have them, and I think they're correct, 2, 5, 1, and 4. Two runs, five hits, one error, four left for the Cardinals, for the Yankees. 0, oh, 6, 1, and 6, no runs, six hits, one error, and six left. That's the correct total. The time of the game was 2.30, and of course the losing pitcher was Chandler, who did pitch such superb ball this afternoon. Well, fans, that's the story. But tomorrow is another day, and what a game we should have out here at the stadium. Now I'll make a special note of this. We come on the air at 1.45 Eastern War Time, so be with us and we'll have fun. I'll repeat the starting time once again, 1.45 Eastern War Time. Until then, smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company, Red Barber, Mel Allen, and Bill Coral.
This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago.